uh, just the Strokes and uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we, from uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 old the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. Was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? Who I, knows? I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not. Having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he, d is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number not? again, Carl? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm, I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't, I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh, God. If, right, say if like you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you, c you kill someone, you go, oh God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. Yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? No, it's just like, not Terrifying, only yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I've I mean, all, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. What that makes is, it even worse? And what's, what makes it even worse, they were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, that would be... No, but say if it was someone who's, like, really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that. It's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well... As Bono did, said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... Is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this, I'm not, I'm not ignoring... Record. This is getting a bit slop sloppy, no, you know? No, no, it's not, no, no, no. No, it is, Rick, it's getting it's sloppy. It. It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week, um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, yeah. let me, I have to explain it to Carl, because, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club annual awards, right? We it's never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's why yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, yeah. you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours. Before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so, it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards, and we had to stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation, as he walked to his table, to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like, straight away, it was, you know, old school stuff. You want to like, thank the ladies, because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we went for a joke. No. Nope. <laughs> just, just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're standing up. Oh, no, can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, and um, <laughs> sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so gone. And uh, Tom O'Connor, he said. Uh, uh, Thank you, God, for... We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's, why we, that's why we were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway. And then he went, oh, thank you, God, for this. Uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> so, but we had to, and we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know, and uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of, lots of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I Cliff, I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there. I don't know who he is. Says there's a lot of people here this this afternoon. You know, it's a wonderful uh, event. But of course, there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, "Thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up." And then he went, table seventy-seven. Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. I'm um, actually brilliant. He looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes. He's an area Sherlock Holmes character. <laughs> then he went, table 107, the cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. 
And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap, slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, well, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman everyone, it's John Inman, right of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was, there was booing no. there. And yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke, ironic booing, I think. Could they cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award, Cowell and, uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, 43. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons. <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid, they might mention him, that we, we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> empty, <laughs> yes. empty. That was particularly <laughs> fun. But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, a Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's well, not listen, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're to not it. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she, just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah. It's, and it's like, I was thought she was going, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she was. We thought she was going to get was. photos out, maybe, start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Coop was there. So Henry <laughs> it was so good because every single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, uh, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> Table 60. Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> that's a uh, corner shop. Lessons learned from Rocky One to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great. It's real glam rock. That's T Rex and Bowie. I was not. I played some up from uh, Ziggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album. I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. all right? Oh, of course. Yeah, always. Yeah, always. A bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we uh, uh, with the education of Carl. Last week he did. Um, uh, che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, you learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do you, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well. And they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same thing. Of... Che Guevara, when he was a kid... Yeah. ...had, like, asthma. Yeah. Right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh... Um... He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out, or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look, you. did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles? <laughs> testicles absence of. So sort of skim <laughs> through, because- One of. It, yeah. It, mother, <laughs> mother. Brackets other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on and somebody put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah. yeah. And but I'm the wondering table whether it was under him. the table. Yeah, but. What, you wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, what, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up. Maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, done a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about I, any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on, more on the right lines there. <laughs> Is there is anyone who, um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear... Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, th the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to It's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem... Well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number of combinations that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination, right? Mm. It's just that you feel, intuitively, right, that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are, is less likely than 1, 7, 12, 34, 60, you know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs> Wu Tang Clan, Uzi, on XFM 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, not crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're going to get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to me. I think XFM people, just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as bad. Careful, careful, they are employers. You don't want to, you don't want to annoy him. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, yeah, have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to, be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host the show yourself? Do it on my own. Yeah. You, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? If they have made you everything you why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what? Do you know what? What St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did. He rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what you think he had asthma or something as a kid? Ah! <laughs> the old day. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? exactly? He took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh. St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're going to get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his uh, anniversary or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we, we... That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what? Oh, I don't diss him. He, he did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So... Mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he the went round on a horse whacking them and... He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. No, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um, it was an animal. Oh. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it? it was. Yes, it was bears. <laughs> wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in Ireland. He rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a he had a slab it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's is, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that, that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, it, if someone called this. And what is there? Is there any historical evidence for Saint Patrick ridding them of? I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I I'm not convinced that. He did go around killing snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just. Uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths 
graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls. Which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White ask Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free, that was an extra... I'll, I'll learn you something there, snakes. Well, yeah. I'll, sorry, I'll just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. You don't learn someone something, you teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not tra it, it, it one's passive. You you, you, know you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> it's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors that you're making. It's like we, where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a. <laughs> familiar type thing that's n that happens to snakes. Okay, people. yeah. They take it for granted, don't they? Right. Snakes born two heads, they'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went <laughs> <laughs> who it's had two heads? The snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was it, was it, was there, there was kids at your school with two heads, was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads. And webbed hands, but they right. weren't related. And they, they weren't friends, because that would have been too obvious, yeah. he said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right, I sneezed a couple of times. I don't know if I'm allergic to them, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh, God, he went, he went, bloody hell. I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open? I went, yeah. Yeah. And then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing. He went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that thing? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song here, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie, Sorrow, Beautiful. <laughs> Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pin Ups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? That was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading a book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. For the best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise. From behind. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but, mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswits. Do you remember Crosswits? It, it was, was the, from the 80s. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one right. It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. Two, he was on the. He was the uh, link man. And he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswits. With uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswits players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favourite Crosswits player? Uh, oh, it's got to be Junkin, for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Barry Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is this with Toxic and uh, yeah, Cryer? Yeah, it was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you wanted. I used to watch it with, um, what's his name? Frank Moore. <laughs> yeah. Frank Moore. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that was great. You were impression. brilliant impressions because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is th the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what? He said I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. I have all the people that come in here for sessions. I think he's really good him, and I said I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange. You're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40-year-old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, he's, slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <coughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know likely, yeah, uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian we Campbell's ran out of it favorite. at five past one, exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie, yeah, in that a sort would... of humorous sketch? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if like David Bowie was you know a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, sort of funny the, things he would we say? We saw that. Um, that what was that in when it said uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what uh, yeah, it would did sound you see like, this? De Dead Ringers is this impressionist show. They did a, it's on Radio Four. They did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? Didn't like it. It was all right. No, it was just that the write-up in uh, the Radio one Times, magazine, I think it was. Radio Times said, uh, "Ever wondered what it would be like if uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby?" Or what would it be like if uh, there was an animal was, hospital was, was hosted was by uh, Anne Robinson? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I have. I have wondered. Was it? Were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah, yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the, weakest you are the weakest dog. Stink. <laughs> no, what was it? It was something like the the they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that. Yeah. It was. This is flagging. Right. Quick, do your bowie again. Um. Oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play changes. Hello. Iggy Pop, you nutter! Stop cutting your sound! <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, 2 o'clock halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My it favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. There's a little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Don't want to Wow! What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises, Carl. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who you know every kind of every every men and women their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week, not like um, us to rip off another idea and just use no, it for no, our no, own. No, 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 no. But this time, the yeah, white yeah. van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie, and he's been he's asked asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay? Come um, on, Carl. It's I don't understand what the big deal is to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales. You know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is. Is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now. And her kids. You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's you know, a, a leather. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say, right, that's it, I'm taking kids in America back to the shop, I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever going to, like, meet her and, and marry her and that, so what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, she's a good voice. He's gay, you know. A lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay, I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So no Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing of Georgie, parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> Okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? 
Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy to... helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well. They they're under resourced. They, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think somewhere. they may have done yeah. yet. Yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. they're, go they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. Yep. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at, That's they were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> what, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, I don't even think about it, I know. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over <laughs> Zoe Harris? How long did it take <laughs> you to be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember I never talked to her and then the <laughs> bit that really got me in, I thought I half liked her and then I remember right we're at a school party sort of infant school <laughs> <laughs> infant school right are you sure it wasn't junior school well <laughs> it's on the cusp yeah right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one yeah and um she was crying because you were saying I don't think we should move in together <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, was she? Had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald. <laughs> Going for yeah. Christ's sake, woman! Come on, <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it because all the mates were saying, "Come on, Carl, she's upset." And I was like, "Oh, whatever." So <laughs> again. Hold on, though. No. Wait a minute. What do you mean all the mates were saying, "Look, come on, Carl"? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, "Come on, she's crying. Help her out." And, like, and you did nothing. I don't. Oh, I she's got, got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset, and you were her boyfriend. Oh, well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where oh, were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. <laughs> I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Current, his current oh. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't. So, as far as you're she... concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's going to make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. It's we a were, word. We were playing dead arm. I was giving another question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities. Oh, this is... Providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy. And the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but... No. People are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were I a celebrity really... and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah. I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I won't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like kind of head butting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. 
and you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, we're mates. Right. So okay. you were playing Dead Arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've got a track. Yes, here, I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work, and this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back Go announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and his track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can you know, get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can tick that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, old, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Put okay, that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's, we, it's, it's week three of his education. We've, you've nailed Russ Butin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what, us a story. What have you learned? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, what, what I can't do, you do it in a minute. <laughs> well, I, I, can I ask some questions then? Let's, uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's her name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, right. that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. All right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just didn't like him. So he went to Munich and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And um, he was in the army and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended and he was like, oh God, I want to... I was doing that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so... He was in hospital. He was in hospital. He gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. Just, I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, I'm not nailing the fact, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, <laughs> listen, listen, let's try and help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. All oh, right. Right. So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you, you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. yeah. So. um... He goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does. Uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, Sorry wait a minute. Is he? Is he? Is he? Uh, <laughs> is he chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? Thirty-five. So let's what, skip, where let's skip the kind of claim to power. Then he's now. He's now. He's now the dictator of Germany. Right. He's in yeah. charge. Yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain... Yeah. ...came a bit sort of un unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting... Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. 
Yeah. So he's well, like, oh god. So a bit goes, late, but yeah. Go he, on. Go, he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like Germany, sort of surrenders. Yeah. Says so it's all over. Forget it. We can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this, and he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife, right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And um, so uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between... It felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. Ne- I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but... You lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning I woke up and, you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. You right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same same series. There's little books. There's tiny little books. Just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed Win- with so much information. Though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah. I, I'm getting a bit bored now, though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris <laughs> and Zoe? The, 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 well, I'm the, wondering if yeah, you've <laughs> spiralled into something there. Yeah, because it, it's, it's like all these other. You know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the bit I left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Fly record. <laughs> <laughs>and Carl. Um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I yes. know I'm, I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. What, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But, um, he said, uh, oh, just saw a programme. He said, what's that big balloon that blew up? And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went, is that the, the Hindenburg? He went, yeah. Oh, I said it was a, a big Zeppelin. He went, yeah. He went, what happened? I said, I said, well, it was helium, wasn't it? And I went, yeah. I said, it was a big, just a huge Zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us, I don't know, it could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes, because it's helium so flammable. And he went, now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? He went, well, no, even if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was like millions of gallons of it and it blew up in the air and you were, and it was in the atmosphere, <laughs> You'd be carrying me talking like Donald Duck, he went. So, imagine that. God. And, they, and but I, what I liked about it, I said, this wasn't in the documentary. No. No, it's an oversight. Maybe just time was against him, they didn't have time to explain Just it like that, that, but that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's annoyed me, that. What? What has? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today, I was like, yeah. It, going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know something as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre- precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But why don't I understand? You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's... Well, you're not interested by it. That's it's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you am, you know all about things you're interested in. You never forget them, do you? You know? Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You go on and... You know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as try to do all my other stuff. (laughs) (laughs) He said, he texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right, but do you think you'd have read it in your leisure time? To be honest... 
No, you wouldn't no, have, would you? I wouldn't, no. No, what do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f- out for food and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Foraging. What do you mean going out yeah. for food? <laughs> they can have a little <laughs> yeah. hole and go <laughs> <You're> hmm. hunting. <laughs> yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by eleven. Wow. 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 Many of he- Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> There was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon body into- Carl is enjoying his- Wow! But he has to get back! <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with a PlayStation 2. <laughs> wow! Oh. <laughs> Alright, Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects, like that guy in you Police said you Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we've, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, got, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. So do you, want, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just, do uh, if you if you get ex- interested, then read on. I think that's- Because that's what I did with school, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... But hasn't that, hasn't that taught you something? Can't we just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the, for like the summer. Yeah, because most series last for three weeks. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um... I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's, what are you interested in? I like, what? I like little interesting bits, like... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadril- quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting. Without having to read a book. And stuff. Why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what when you when you think of 17 quadrillion? It's a lot, what, isn't it? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject then? I don't know. No, it's just that that Wilson was your favourite subject. You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. D- no, but that, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys, and I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way because it's it's kitted out the same. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about? then? No, we were talking about something completely different. And you went. If you give a monkey a childbirth, but it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were. We were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's... Well, we're... Yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, <laughs> and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. what did happen to that bloke who used to make the same effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember was him. Was he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah? If anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> girls and boys. Um, you've embarrassed yourself then, Gervais. What? Well, we've had a number of calls and emails. Yeah. Pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the Ze- Zeppelin was filled with helium. Hydrogen. But filled with hydrogen. Oh, right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. Yeah, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do- documentary. So it just it just went up. So that's that's probably why the the voices didn't go. That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah. But it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like it's school fates and stuff where they're like filling little balloons with helium. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just you know just blowing up you know left, right, and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What, what I'm mean? saying is it's not, it's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. What, hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying, because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event, or a, you know, a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that. Uh, that that. Big but presumably, balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it was. It wasn't the fact how dangerous the the rare gas was, or the. Uh, it was the fact that um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went. There was nothing. A hole in it would have been as bad. It just it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't. It was irrelevant that 
what, what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought it was, there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is, because the outer thing was so thin, right, the, the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you've popped a balloon? Mm -hmm. Well, not, not, not quite. It didn't quite. sort of go <laughs> It didn't, like, flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I'll tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week for it, I was, like, trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take, helium balloons, to lift a human up? <laughs> Go on. 6,000. Should we do it? If you want. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? 10 feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're a big selling, very successful magazine there, and they know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six Carl, thousand's an awful into lot. Into the really. air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat six thousand Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Doctor Fox? We could get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more from Fox, to, isn't it? Mix. Yeah. <laughs>Explain what I'm laughing at. Right? Uh, we just had a call um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk-on part in the office. And uh, uh, we immediately went, "Oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistically." You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain? That's a private and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, "Oh, I don't know." In any way, put the phone down to him, and Carl went. <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> 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 you, you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, though, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl to get... Carl is just... He's just... <laughs> turned... On the rope would pull out my trousers and punch <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So, hang on, but let's just no. think about the... Because, wait a minute, before, I mean, we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no, we wouldn't. Of course we can't. There's no you in the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Look, what happened to the Hindenburg? No, but that was... That was that was, <laughs> I was just saying, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get all, we get someone right. But what if what if he, get, he gets loose and he just floats off <laughs> into the air? <laughs> no, we never, and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah, used to peg his grifter. <laughs> So, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, no, was, talk, listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Shut up a minute, let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. No, no it's six, not, it's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons, that's a lot of balloons. No, it's not, no, no, oh, it's not. Be silly. For 6, sponsorship, 000. people pay for, uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this, just so we can film no, it. Hang on, is there not an easier way of just getting <laughs> one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is, no. there's no challenge there. No, it's yeah, got to be, it's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo, and the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang no. on, so what we've got, we've got each person with like oh. 500 balloons. Yeah. That's mad, you, can you imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000? Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you'd, uh, we, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake, we can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget, we've got XFM behind us. Yeah, but balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap. You can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl. You can't just like attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... Oh. What, you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. <laughs> oh, we'll release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> <laughs>
Fly, my pretties, fly. Listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about, and, and when I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons. And I just don't oh. think, I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but you can at different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you uh, think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a couple of, there's a bloke willing to do it. I, I know he doesn't know the technology of it, he's willing to sort of stand by. And, and so the company just on, has we, access to helium like that. So we can do this, come on. London. Well, someone's done Londoners. It, it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, oh, we can't get all the balloons. No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't, Carl, you're uh, more excited about this than anything else, about your education, about your exam right, results. You're so exciting. excited. And, and we'll have a little rope, we'll like fly in a little kite, a little Carl. We're like, let's go fly. Carl, what will you wear, like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, no, with sponsorship with... all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You look like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not gonna sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. And we need tethier. some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> off. This is gonna be great. And he'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little Dee boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. he's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can oh. we paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, because yeah, no, that would be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We do it for charity. We do it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is. We we'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you got if you can help us lift Carl up thirty feet. Let's say thirty. I think feet. it has to be a decent. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a decent. What well, is there a world record? Because we want to break that. If we're yeah, we want to break it. that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise oh. details here. We've got, uh, I'm so excited. Email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? UK. What's the number? The number, Carl? 0870 800 Lift it again. Carl. Lift Carl. 0870 800 uh, Sponsored by Heat Magazine and or Maybe else. even if you've just got an idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we're able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna play a Beatles track for song for the... For the lovers, oh yeah. man, it's uh, it's off the Help album, and it's um, you've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face as he goes. Well, XFM, we're near the end of the show. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed your company, Carl. We're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again. And uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall is uh, Canary Wharf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. A lot, a, a more. Yeah, I'm Because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Just, just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change your record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, can I just, can I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right? Come on, Carl. You'll be the, your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after, after Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for a oh. while. This is from, uh, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play Goodbye. <laughs> Our Freaks Electric, Richard Eccles, Sugar Babes on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. Carl, the, uh, the producer. Right. Seven minutes past one of a Saturday, and what a lovely Saturday it is. It is indeed. By, well, it, it looks nice and bright, but it's deceptive, because I went out, and I just had a t-shirt on, and I had my jumper on me. I got out there, and I thought, this is chilly. <laughs> I, had to pop, I had to pop the jumper on. Oh, no. So, uh, you good. know, just be careful. If, you, if you're just, uh, you know, looking out the window thinking, I'll, I'll go outside, pop a jumper on, or, or, or a jacket, because it looks nice, but it is a little bit colder than it looks. Rick, can I ask, were you wearing the jumper around your waist, tied with a knot, or did you have it over your shoulders, like maybe I, you just jumped off a yacht? I popped it round my waist, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I took my t-shirt in for neatness and comfort. Lovely. But I know, even I know that's a little bit dorky, so sure. I was trying to hide the belt line. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, then I popped the jump on, didn't have to worry about it. Did so you now go with the double knot? 
I didn't, I didn't, uh, uh, Because I can loosen if you're not careful, especially if you're carrying bags or you're busy on the tube. I know, but I wouldn't mind that, as long as I didn't lose it. As long as I saw it loosen and fall, I'd <laughs> okay. pick it up. And you'd then, uh, devastated if you and then clean and it. Things. Not in the, uh, washing machine, though. Go just, on. I'd pop it in a cold wash soak, right, okay. and then leave it out on a few towels or something, or pop it over the radiator. So what's the problem with uh, putting it in a hot wash? Well, it can cause shrinking. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, <laughs> coming up, we've got lo loads of tunes. We're gonna be playing, um, some of the best bands around, some, uh, some new ones, some old ones. Might even play some, um, uh, Adamant. We don't know yet. <laughs> Let's have, uh, Badly Drawn Boy, though, shall we, Carl? Current single. <laughs> Badly drawn boy there, silent sigh. Is that the one with the duck? That video? Yes. Very yeah. good video. Apparently he stopped wearing his hat around because he keeps getting recognised. And he's going to not wear his hat when he doesn't want to get recognised. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. Mm. Mean, be careful, let's just have a kind of a light cold well, rinse. Well, yeah, light cold rinse, soak it, right, because yeah. it's woollen, right, mm. and then just leave it out on a towel. Or, you know, maybe in, mm. in you know, near the immersion heater. Sure. Or over a radiator. Well, what, or even the radiator, is that a problem? It can <laughs> cause that sort of, you know, <laughs> damaging to okay. the fibres of the wall. He had, well, a he had a kid last week. Did he? Yeah. Who did? Badly drawn boy. Oh, right, okay. Dad Badly drawn little boy, he's yeah. gonna call it. Isn't he? Brilliant, Rick. Yeah. Well done. It's a sort of satire. Mm. I'd like to see that as a headline in a tabloid. deliver, oi, oi, money, you, your life. Oh. Um, now, <laughs> going out. Oh, Carl, can we don't explain panic. why that's funny? Don't panic, Carl. I'm a professional. Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? Nothing. Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say. You I can can't. You can. This is so unprofessional. It's. What? What? What have we done? What, talking about wool? No. <laughs> Come on, Carl. What's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> He's great, and he's, he's so scared. Um, Come on, Carl. What's tell us? I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you look, can... you can't. Look, people are perplexed now. What's the What's the thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say, is it, is it an email that's been received by the head of yeah, XFM? Yeah, you've, you've got the email open. You, you can talk about. You can say what it. Okay, yeah, let me just without, say. Without, I don't understand it. Please know that under. Uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any reference yeah. to Adamant's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. Subject, we can't, we can't talk about that. You can play his records and sing his classic sing, songs. Sing songs. Yeah, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what. We, yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was going to mention that or influence anything, and I totally agree with the law. So don't, don't panic, Carl. That should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's like you know, accidents happen. Go when, on then. when things like that happen, right? You know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And and once things are in your head. Yeah. It's difficult not to mention it. I mean, when uh, <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. Go on. Right. <laughs> me uh, <laughs> me mum's sister Hazel. Right. Was, was seeing another bloke. <laughs> um, it's weird because she's a lesbian now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway. <laughs> But anyway, she was seeing this bloke, and it looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He looked like Ken Dodd. Looked like Ken Dodd. So people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd." So I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> did you do it as a joke, or did you? No, no, because you know when you know, like, it's like, I'm not allowed to say that. I can't yeah. say that. I can't, mustn't say that. Can't. And then yeah. I saw him. I thought, Jesus, does look like him. <laughs> Yeah. came out. <laughs> yeah. Was it Doddy you turned her into a lesbo, do you think? Well, he wasn't a good looking bloke, so yeah. possibly. She started going out with Esther Ransom then. <laughs> which is which is weird out of the frying pan. What was the story with the lesbianism then? Did, 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 how did she announce that to everyone? What um, age was she when she realised? Well, we, we, I mean, we're not a close family, do you know what I mean? We're not no. a family who keeps in touch with everyone. And I think my mum called her up one Christmas. And sort of said, you know, I was. I How's was the Diddy Will. men? <laughs> yeah, that was nutty uh, And yeah. she said, oh, no, I'm not, I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm knocking about with Sandra or whatever. Right. And it was like, oh, right. Not big butch Sandra with the big earrings and the skinhead. <laughs> used to live down the road from you. I, I don't know. Used I to get met. Doc Martins wholesale. That's Sandra. <laughs> but but she lived, she had a haunted house. Go on. Um, <laughs> Who, Sandra? No, Hazel. Right. This, is this before she was a lesbian or not? Before, okay, and um, there was a bike in the hall, and the pedals used to go backwards. <laughs> there was a what the in the hall? A bike. 
That's handy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. that's great. Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. So, th- sorry, no, there was, I want to know about the haunted house. There was mm. a bike in the hall, and what There was happened? a bike in the hall, and the pedals used to go backwards on their own. And also, shoes used to stick to the wall or something. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> shoes used to stick to the wall? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds like a... That's a haunted house. A, 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 a household. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Are. Brilliant. Maybe she should clean the walls. Oh, look at you. Classic. Lars, and there she goes. What a great start to a show. We've had, we've had 20 minutes of some of the, the best banter, chatter and music and anecdote anywhere on the dial. You're damn right. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sweet man, sweet man. Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Um, now, oh, oh, well, I, I love that track. It's lovely. I, I, they've got a bit of the, the Liverpool gene pool, haven't they? That sort of doddy. You know what I mean? I like the Scouse sort of look, you know, the Scylla Black and the Stan Boardman. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, particularly it's sort of, unique it's, to Liverpool. It's isn't sort it? of happy and teeth and ears. And, <laughs> it's you know happy I mean? and teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant description. Yeah. Happy and teeth and ears. <laughs> yeah, that's just three of my <laughs> friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we've got a great track lined up, haven't we, Carl, that I've brought in? So I'm going to go off. Now, I'm well, not ashamed. As you know, me and Steve aren't worried about being part of a trend or, or you know, being trendy or jumping on the back. Steve particularly doesn't worry about, like, looking good or, well, you know. Uh, no, no, I'm saying. No, I, as a compliment, you don't, he, doesn't, he doesn't worry about walking along like that or, you know. Well, this is, like a, I'm looking good. No, no, no. no good but I'm you. saying you don't mind the insults, freak boy or goggle eye or. Uh, swore off a duck's back, mate. Do you know what I mean? Or, or a new phrase that's been coined because of Steve's phrase, water off a frog's back. Who's saying that? Well, just a lot of, lot, a, lot, a lot of your, what? a lot of friends and that. But I mean. Well, my friends? Yeah. A lot of, uh. A lot of the people. Yeah, you, can you, you name names or? I, I can't really. You make promises, you can't. I, I can't. I can't really. Anyone up. I, I think it's the Kagol. Looks good. It does look it's good. It's waterproof, Rick, and it's also stylish. I wear nothing underneath, so it's tight oh. to the skin. It gets sticky oh, in weather. Yeah. Is that why you sort of it's rustle? Sexy. But what's, so what's, what's all the. Is there abuse? What's the no, no, they just say. Because I'm a pretty trendy guy, but I, I, as you say, I cut my own trend. You know, I make my own style. You know, that, consequently, the pipe. You don't feel that's an affectation? I, I don't think, I think because you're young and tall, yeah. the pipe looks a little bit silly. Go on. I mean, I know you're, wor- you're worried about, because we've already lost the trilby. Well, I'm worried because pipes are going to die out. I mean, this is the problem, that there's no young people now who are taking up the pipe as a smoking device. Is there's there no anyone, young people. is there anyone under the age of, what should we say, Oh, we've said this 25? before, and I don't think there was, there was no one. I think there was some nutty old woman who phoned in and said, I smoke a pipe. But yeah. I'm talking about, you know, because years ago it was like an Oxbridge student, you know, you'd be at Cambridge or something, you'd have a, a lovely pipe, you know, a tweed suit, you'd be there studying. That was, you know, and that was the young gen always smoked a pipe, but no one is now. I, I tell you this, in the year 2050, there'll be no pipes. They won't exist. Well, I think all all um, drugs like uh, nicotine and alcohol will be banned, and we won't we won't be allowed to think our own thoughts. We'll have to live in the sewers, like eating rat burgers That's or true something, enough. won't we? Yeah. And it will have to download our memories or something. Oh probably. God! And I, I, that, but I'll be a rebel, Rick. I'll just no, be down there listening to jazz. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll just have a little chip in the back, and you'll be you'll be going out with a big fat man with a big toga on, and there'll be and you'll be you'll be touching him. But well, I think he's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be fighting with the. The Rebel Underground. No, you won't. I will. No. I will. I'll you, be dead, won't I? <laughs> you'll be dead, yeah. I'll be dead, yeah. In 2050, you will. I'll be dead. Unless you, because obviously you're becoming quite wealthy now. You're becoming a very rich man, obviously, from all your, you know, I'll celebrity have brain, endorsements. I'll have my brain put into a robot. <laughs> exactly. Made of titanium. And yeah. I'll have it, oh. Would you it, be cryogenically frozen if you could do it? I would, but I'd leave myself out on a towel. <laughs> right. Never, because if you do it too quickly, you, there is shrinkage. You've got to be careful. Did you read in the paper this week? This is true. Apparently, the, um, the world's oldest man, who's 113, lives in some little part of Japan. Sure. Like little island in Japan. Yeah. But apparently, the world's oldest woman also lives in exactly the same place. Now, I don't know if she's since died, but she lived in the same place as well. Do you not think there's something suspicious going on there? I mean, isn't that a bit eerie to I'm, you? I'm thinking, have you ever seen them together? <laughs> and have, has he ever, have you ever found lipstick in his bag? <laughs> I think that would be one and the same. I wonder if it's something like, you know, what, what, what brought Godzilla back? There's some kind of... There's oh, some antics no. over there. No, there, there might be, might they're sort of like, yeah. Although, just hearing some of Carl's stories about school, there's somewhat going on there where he lives. Yeah. Did you say you did live near a sort of um, nuclear plant or something? I found out it wasn't a nuclear plant, it was a chemical plant. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Really? And is that, is that really true? What colour was the yeah. tap water in your area? It was better than it is in London. Right. Really? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> water in London's ropey. <laughs> Um, and, and I use one of them water filters. Do you really? And the guy down in the office was saying it's a waste of time though, because they only work for a couple of water, like you fill your jug twice, and then the water's going through the same muck, isn't it? 
That's true enough. But so it's not, if it's not getting through, it's not getting through. No, If it's, it's a filter, it doesn't matter, does it? S still not good, though. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. So, you just, are you just throwing it away based on what that bloke said? <laughs> did, did he sell, ha, did he the sell you another one that he had on <laughs> yeah, him? Did a, he better, a better updated model. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Did he have a suit and a When beach? you say, like, he works here, was he actually hanging around outside? <laughs> yeah. Did, did he with have a, a suitcase with, with a lots cart. of these in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Can I, I just go back to insults briefly? Go on, You know, goofy. saying... <laughs> oh, no, no, I, uh, see, that's... Goofy, that's no, not No, no, fair. no, because that's, that's what he said, it's in my head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? When did he no, say that? No, no, I mean... When did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. Okay. He said about Baldy? once in my head. Hey, no, when it's, come on. Come off it, don't what, start. Who's calling me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. No. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you can oh, sort your account, I can't. What do you mean I can sort? How can I sort my look at? I'm not even Goofy, that's not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just need to... Sorting out a bit. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. I noticed the other day when Carl was sitting on your knee having his picture taken. Yeah. It's a long story, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny because, I mean, you know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know hamburger off um, uh, McDonald's? Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger. And it's sort of quite put upon. It's S Suzanne thinks I look like that thing in that <laughs> Dulux advert. You know when the woman pulls the head off that? <laughs> that little plasticine yeah, morph type and then they make a new ad for it. And it's like a little head. <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend saying it. I know. Anyway, listen, let's let's get back to uh, uh, business here. This is uh, a great track. It's America by Simon and Garfunkel. This is what I started saying. We Strokes, last night, XFM 104.9, we're flying now, 35 minutes into it, no <laughs> real, no real hiccups, I don't think that not I- Not so far. And that, oh, it's, it's going really well, my name's Ricky Gervais, with me Steve. Hello there. Carl. Alright. All right. Coming up soon, white van man, white van Carl, we ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. This is a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be testing Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know, he got a GCSE. It's the last one, isn't it? It's in weird. history. It was the last heavy sort of one, yeah. No. And so Winston Churchill. Well, yeah, because we've got, we got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the uh, Aesop's Fables. I can't fables. read that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it. Right, just choose fine, out, yeah. just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of uh, into the air with the. No, balloons. this has gone a bit ballistic. I've actually, gone off the idea. Uh, oh no, shut no, up! No, don't you? Haven't gone but off the, 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 we've 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 inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right, and centre, and uh, I think it's a good idea. But I think we we should we should uh, you know make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe. Uh, you know. I well, could, hang on. I, I, let's, I before we go out, let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who were Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, so last week we discovered, was it that 623, uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 balloons filled with helium can lift a bloke off the floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Nor is. Nor did I, no. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can, they can uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? Yeah, if it's just... And I think it's certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's quite a long way. 11,000 feet. 11,000 feet. Yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with, like, little those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo or I don't somewhere. think that can be right, health and safety-wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I, just, I, I, I think as we, if we get him to sign some up, which I will... Okay. Uh, I think we'll cover It'll ourselves. But, yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like, um, was it, is it Tea in the Park? The, yeah. You know, capital FM, uh, yeah, event, the, you know, the big event. You can get sort of steps, at least H from steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, uh, oh, oh, I don't mind uh, comparing it. Steve's going to do, uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match and he's, I mean, you're getting pretty... I'm making a lot of progress, yeah. You're, 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 you are going to be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Steve never learnt an instrument, which he regrets, you know, and, uh, and you know, he's a modern lad and uh, he's, uh, he's using uh, turntables as his instrument. 
I just got two turntables and a microphone, and so far, I mean, that's, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't laugh because it is mental. The kind of stuff I'm coming out with, and I'm scratching. I've got I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up! It's that. No, no. no if, if look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness sake! If you're talking about freaks, look at those really. <laughs> Man alive! <laughs> at least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the whatever least, it's called. Uh, they used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. So this yeah. one is just some shots of like what you see from outside a train. I that know. is to them that is more glamorous and exciting apparently than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Carl. And that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on on some music, yeah. If I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I... <laughs> I can't believe this is... This no, is just happening. so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> you know, I was on the... This is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone and he went, Oi! Uh, lanky, you dropped your mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew he meant, yeah, Steve. But <laughs> he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. No, but my point was there was no one else at all who was about to exit the train. Okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have got excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. Oh well. <laughs> I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Why lanky? What's he, he going to do? Phone. Yeah. Do you I want your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why no. is it got out of hand? What are no, you doing? It's about? funny. I just want to. I want you know. You know I want to sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt. So as you go up there, you sort of tip forward <laughs> slightly, so you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. On your, yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll do that, Lanky. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. Here he comes. No, I mean, last week it was just a bit of fun about going like just lifting my feet off the ground. No. And that's a big difference to what it's got now. No. Okay. Well, I will tell you what, we will do a hundred feet in the air, and we and I'll hold on to the rope. But we'll do it at Wembley Arena with the tickets. <laughs> but it'll be for charity, Carl. Yeah, it'll be for charity. Cool. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it. You just know. Going out of hand. It's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke, <laughs> but I won't want to go on Stars in the Rise. Sure. And it's it's got out of hand. That's how it's sort of it's grown too big. I don't. Who like would you it. do if you're on Stars in the Rise? <laughs> I'd do that. Uh, Moby. Ja no, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac oh, Heath, the, that one, yeah. yeah. Is it, Mac the knife? That's what I do. <laughs> but which? Who? Which, yeah, but he, he do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't. It's not the song, is it? It's, it's uh, the singer. You could do um, Jimmy Somerville, I think, quite well. Yeah, Somerville, you'd be uh, good as. Moby. Um, did Morph bring out a single? I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not sure. I'm sure didn't he have so. a theme tune? Did Morph phone in? If you think Morph. Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. <laughs> Express 2 featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9, Quarter to 2, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm He's sure gonna, we're white just going to be doing uh, White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because okay. we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Sure. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But Carl, what do you make of uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary? Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year, and kids who, what, did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year. What, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry, first year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. 
Um, kids no. have beards and no, stuff. No, not year 11. They're 11 when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right, well, I'm 11. The kids at the, uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form and then there's you can a leave when you, you can right. leave when you're 16, I think, can't you now? Right, well, kids who were 16 yeah. looked old. They, had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next <laughs> yep. one? Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, they had kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million payoff has cost EMI staff... Uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have. They should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Vicious circle, that. Right. Have you have you done? You've done a business degree, already, have you? You did commerce. Yeah. What, where did you do that? What did you do that? In school. I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, a, did you get an O level or a GCSE? Uh, we know he didn't. You know. <laughs> but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of maths? What did he fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like, if you want to do it, you can. What do was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check pay, pay a bill, pay a bill, have a visit right now. I met down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and. <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space <laughs> So Sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, no. though. That was someone else, wasn't it? That was an aunt. Uh, yeah. yeah. That wasn't special K. Oh, dear. What about this, then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird, this. Because when I was out with you... I don't believe it's going to be weird, whatever you say, no, Carl. Go we, on. No, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once, Act you what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. It was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he come up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. I said, how dare you come to me asking? And I, I got a bit livid. And I <laughs> He looked at he looked at me like oh my god he's got a right one here and he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So what did the you say? I, ju I just I just I just went I just went a bit mad. I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time, and uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers, yeah. and you know went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it, and you know I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, or I anything? just left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just act mental. Um, uh, <laughs> See, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says oh, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. Yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another Yeah. two million? Yeah. Why, why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> Um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like when you're yeah. on a plane. They're like £2.50 <laughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What What is it doing there? Why is have it a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about... Paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It was pretty and boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more, this is where you might be working? 
This is where you're likely to work. <laughs> Possibly. If you leave there was two trips. There was that and a trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> Cordon Bleu, what's that? It's like that... a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. What, you didn't tell anyone? Or, no, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left, and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. Oh, you know, where? Been stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck in a printer? I don't know. <laughs> what was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park around the back. Yeah. Right, there was there was a grid, and uh, all the concrete had gone funny. So when it rained, you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right. And I got in. Do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in? While she oh yeah. Out? And yeah. I got in one of them, and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement. No, of I, water. It was full oh, it was of water. water right, it'd been right, raining. Right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, "Where's Where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans." I was like, <laughs> and you were so, stranded in a lake. So someone said, oh, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this <laughs> <laughs> lake in, like a, in a trolley. And he said, get back in. I said, Would you say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks. I said, I'm, I'm, it's too deep. I can't get out. You'll have to pass me something. And he said, I'm not passing you nothing. He said, you can get out of there and walk through it. I said, I'm not. I've got my trainers on. Probably the same one. Yeah, you've risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, I'm not getting these wet. I said, I, I said what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. He said, the grid's blocked. Now get out or you're sacked. I said, well, I'm not getting out. He said, right, you're sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Only about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of it. <laughs> Just think. I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? <laughs> That's fantastic. Should we play a record? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's a joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time on the show. Uh, Electric Soft Parade. I keep trying to get the album for free from you, Carl. You've not sorted me out yet. I have to rely on other people to give me uh, different copies. No, of I did try. Tracks. I'll keep trying. Please do. This is one called There's a Silence, Electric Soft Parade. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gomez and Shot Shot on XFM 101.9. Uh, sorry, um, I was going to tell Steve something. Um, talk amongst yourselves. When you were out there, um, Johnny Mango phoned up and said to Carl, come on, when are we going to do this thing? And Carl got all nervous. Right, and, uh, uh, he went, you don't want to do it, do you? He went, he said, well, I just, it's going to get out of hand. I just wanted to go as high as a tree. And, uh, he went, well, you can, we just I'll hold you down with a rope. He went, yeah, but he said, but when the crowd are there and they're all screaming higher, higher, I feel the pressure and I have to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> what crowd? <laughs> <laughs> what crowd is this? Higher. No, higher. We don't live in a, like, a medieval era. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling midgets. Well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on, if there's anyone got any of those... Tumbling midgets would be amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Less balloons, cheaper to do. Oh, you're going no, up, you're going going up with them. No, you're going up with them. No, you're going up with not just no. With a midget under either arm. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh, it's time for your at uh, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. Uh, this week, Carl was studying uh, the life and times of Winston Churchill. Um, what did you make of it, Carl? What, 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 what did Churchill do for right, you? La well, last week I made a bit of an error with Hitler. Yeah, you Go didn't on, just to remember too much, and it just it was way too much for me. Sure. So what I've done this week, sort of flicked through, got a few of the basic facts. Yeah. And what I've learned, right, um, <laughs> bit weird the way all these people have something in common that they're all a bit weird when the, when they're younger. Okay. They've got go on, some sort of illness. Was, go on. Well, you know, Rasputin, he, he wasn't well as a kid. Yeah. Che Guevara. Oh, was this is Rasputin the mad monk wasn't well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, che Guevara. Yeah. Um... Asthma. Asthma, really bad asthma. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hitler, he was Only a one bit, bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> Only one. His mother. He got was what, a bit mental. That could be libelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, who've we done? And Churchill. Yeah. Um, very weak, there. very weak child. Was he? Um, he only spoke to his dad four times in his whole lifetime. Really? Yeah. Didn't get on with his dad. Right. And I think one of the times when his dad spoke to him, he was having a go. 
saying um, he didn't do as well in the army as he wanted him to. Right. So that's that's pretty sad bit I picked yeah, up yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. So that spurred him on anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not going in all the ins and outs. Very, uh, very uh, important bloke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I, seriously. I mean, yeah. your dad bought the tapes, didn't he? Yes. And I can understand why. Because he did, he did change a lot for us. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be sat here now talking like this. Why? We could have been German. <laughs> yep. He didn't let that happen. No. Um, everyone had a go at him, right? When it, when it, when like uh, I think it was Chamberlain who was in power, yeah. and he was like saying, "Don't be trusting that Hitler." Yeah. You know, and everyone's like, "Look, stop causing trouble." Chamberlain sorted it out. You know, he sorted out a peace agreement. Yeah. And he was like, uh, "No, I don't trust him." And everyone's like, oh, you, you know, you're just causing trouble. You know, everyone else is happy. Then it turned out that Hitler mm. did actually do the dirty yeah. Yeah, and try and come over. I remember, he did, didn't he do some? He started a war or so something? There was a conflict of some kind. Yeah, he yeah. Start, started a problem. Mm. And uh, everyone went, hang on a minute, that Churchill knew what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Get him back in charge. Sure. And they got him in, and uh, Hitler was scared of him because he knew that he wasn't going to be having any lies or anything. He couldn't try it on with, with Churchill. Yeah. And Especially uh, when he was a little bit pissed up and coked and with a was? big cigar. Churchill. He wasn't that. He wasn't doing that. I think I think a lot were in the, in the, during the war, in the war cabinet. I think they had to have things to keep him awake all night and stuff. And uh, he yeah. certainly liked a brandy. Rick, Winston Churchill was coked up, was he? <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just, I, this is something I wasn't aware of. If there are any historians uh, listening, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm was that very in the sorry. W- world at war? No, I don't think so. Any any uh, any uh, uh, historians or uh, uh, um, you know experts on uh, on war? Um, did uh, did Churchill and not not some of the uh, the other uh, people during uh, I think the first and second world war uh, take a little bit so, of uh, so cocaine? Uh, so when it said that Hitler, doctors certainly used to Hitler like cakes. Would they be like the funny sort of cakes? No, they he probably did like a little bit of uh, Madeira cake. Right. Yeah, there's probably nothing. Like that. Sorry, carry on. So um, anyway. Um, he beat the Bosch. Yeah, did all that. Oh, that's steady on his personal life's nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the, the most amazing <laughs> bit is, right, he wasn't he wasn't fit, and uh, he had a couple well, of strokes. Well, he's a good-looking bloke in many ways. <laughs> well, well he, he had a couple of strokes, but he had a stroke on, say... He, we've I'm had that, he beat the Bosch, he likes to have a couple of strokes. Yeah. Let's not get into innuendo, Carl, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right, say he had, like, a stroke on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was up and fighting again on a Wednesday. Really? He was, he was a strong bloke. Yeah. And then he died at about the age of eighty six or something. Good, he's a good lad, wasn't he? He was really good. Yeah. Is so he, is he your, is he the is he the one you you favour most of all? I'd the ones say you out of all, I mean Rasputin. I don't understand why he got. Like I said, I don't know why they made a book on him. No. No. He just didn't deserve it. <laughs> no. No. Che Guevara, you know, he had his he had his time, I suppose, and uh, yeah. did a bit did a bit good for certain people. Sure. Sort, yeah. Sorted Cuba out. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me. No. no. Uh, Hitler, I mean, enough said. Yeah. yeah. Bad bloke. Churchill sorted <laughs> it all out. Yeah. And like I so said, your favourite out of the four of them, the, 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 of all those four, is Churchill. Churchill, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you, I think. What I love uh, with, <laughs> with your kind of sort of summary of these people's incredible lives is the way that it's almost like I remember in Looking magazine. <laughs> I don't remember looking. It was the Junior yeah, TV Times. Looking. They used yeah. to have um, half a page, which was a comic strip, yeah. summarising someone's life. You might have, say, Five Star, the story of Five Star, yeah. and you'd have a picture. I always remember the Roger Moore one yeah. was a picture of like Roger's parents. It was like Roger Moore was born in 1930. Da, da, da. Picture of Roger's parents. Roger grew up during the war. Picture of Roger yeah. running down the street, right? Yeah. This is a school kid with a, a Spitfire coming behind him, like he was going to try and shoot him. Mr. Smith, surely. Exactly, uh, exactly, Mr. Smith. Yeah. R- Roger uh, took up acting. Picture yeah. of Roger like acting. Yeah. Roger became James Bond. James Bond, Roger's now a popular, um, you know, star in his own right, and there's a lot of work for charity. Brilliant. It summed up the whole thing in kind of I think they pictures. used to have that in uh, uh, one of the TV Times or the yeah, Sunmo. I, I, I remember sort of when it was uh, Tina Turner, um, st- uh, what's it, born Sarah May Bullock, uh, then it was Nutbush City Limits, stop hitting me, Ike. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, they were simply <laughs> the best, <laughs> and that was it. It was <laughs> great. And that's very much what the, uh, how your summary of... of Great, great events is. But I'd say if you didn't know about Churchill, you've learned a bit today. So I thought so. Can, any, can people call in uh, to the, uh, the, the, well, yeah. all these, all these fellas taking that? cocaine? Uh, I think I'm right. It's 08 700 800 1234. Yeah. Give us a call, XFM 104.9. Did Winston Churchill and various other dignitaries take coke during C- the war? During the war, saying up for the war effort, but the emergency uh, summits and meetings, I, I, I think it was, I, I think it's been documented. I could be wrong. And let me tell you now, it's not happening today.
Wow. Pete Yorma. <laughs> He's there, isn't he, to save me for Nancy, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, the car builder. I'm getting excited now because we've had loads of um, calls and emails, uh, uh, not only backing me up, but going a little bit further. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Johnny Mango called in again. He's, our, he's become our sort of official researcher on the, on this show. Um, that um, there is evidence that uh, Queen Victoria in Balmoral, with a young house guest, Winston Churchill, used to consume cocaine-filled lozenges. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. Also, uh, MDMA was a, a precursor of sort of ecstasy, a derivative, and uh, that was big in the day, giving soldiers, you know, a little um, pick-me-up. So, it's not so mad, is it? It sort Winston of makes Churchill sense, because he it? was into his speeches and that, and they say that coke gives you sort of... <laughs> You know the balls to stand up and, and say like. Not that that's a good thing. And no, it's should, not. No. Definitely not. No. Right. But it apparently it gives you it gives you it makes you confident, doesn't it? So you can stand up and say you know we're going to fight them on the beaches. Yeah. And all that and and sound yeah. like you mean it. It's exactly yeah. When he was sort of like you know um, a little bit pissed up with his cigar on, coked off his tits, he wanted to fight. He didn't care where it was. He'd fight on a yeah. beach. He yeah. didn't care. He yeah. didn't care if he got sand in his new trainers. Exactly. He was boosted up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why he was coming hard. He was very much. You got to think of him as the Liam Gallagher of his day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Are we oh. allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't mean in terms of referencing drugs, but are we allowed? To, is this like libelous to Winston Churchill? We, one, or you can't him? libel the dead. Yeah, but Two, you, it's a, a is lot that of only it, in America? We're, we're, I'm asking, and I, we're, not, we're not saying, you know. To, to, I think you'd pro- probably going to do a fair, fair comment. Um, uh, three, we say we were joking. Yeah. Four, it's a satire. <laughs> yeah. Um, five, we love him. Five, we're not we're not condoning <laughs> drugs in any way. Six, um, this is Dermot O'Leary's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a go at him anyway. That's what he's all right. <laughs> If there's any law against Rasputin, we might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> law against Rasputin. Law against you Rasputin. did willfully Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. All over you the airways. You did slag off Russia's greatest love machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't shoot him till he was dead, did you? Oh, oh put some poison into his I'll tell you wine. this, if there's any other historical questions that people want answered, then we're the men. Because really, with, with the three of us, our knowledge of the fact that the Hindenburg was filled with helium, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of coke habits and various drug habits of, um, of Britain's most famous uh, political leader, yeah. we've got the answers to all of it. Einstein. Go on. I found out in the week that he, um, he didn't talk till he was six. See, it's all, it's all these people who are weird. Churchill couldn't read, could he, till he was about eight or nine? Really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. He had uh, he got a D in history apparently, GCSE. Yeah. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. No, but um, Carl uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of he's had a bad week now. He got stressed about Hitler and and Churchill. And I said, well, we're we're, we're chill out a little bit and we're, I'll teach him something a little bit um, cosier. And I said, like, what about animals? No, you know, not frightening other mm. animals. You're interested in animals, aren't you? Yeah. You know, and. Um, and he went, oh, all right then, all right then. And then he went, okay, here's a question for you, Heather. So there's there's three animals without ears. He said, and I've told you one. <laughs> and I went, well, that's the snake, because he was talking about the snake. He went, I went, I went, hold on, Carl, there's loads of animals without ears. He went, there's not, there's three. I went, there's loads. I said, jellyfish, worms, or, um, single-cell protozoa, peripherous. But he went, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Animals, proper animals. I went, they are animals. He went, no, proper animals. And I went, do you mean mammals? He went, what are you on about? I said, are, are these animals, are, are, have they got legs and are they fur-bearing, right? And, and he went, one is. They've got legs. I went, I don't know, I give up. He went, right, the turtle. I went, right, yeah. And he went, and the bumblebee. <laughs> he said, that's the one with fur. <laughs> that's the one with fur. <laughs> the one well- uh, what are you thinking? What is in your head, Carl? Which has got the most fur, a bee or a turtle? It's not fur. What is it? Well, well it's, it's, you know... He's done you there, Jerry. It's pseudo hairs, isn't it? It's like, a, it's a hair, it's a keratin thing. It's not like we have, like, mammals grow fur. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's not convinced! <laughs> when, on, we say that, when we say, like, fur, we, 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 mammals are warm-blooded creatures. Yeah. Uh, often, usually percent, or there's a few exceptions, right, that, that give their milk to their young, nurture their young, and they have fur. Have you heard about osters? O- osters? Um, oysters. <laughs> um, they, one minute they're a man, then they're a woman, then they're a man again. 
Like Eddie Izzard. Now that's, that's libelous. <laughs> He's a transvestite, could I say. He's not a transsexual. Let's say that straight away. I'm retracting that. Right, go on then. Give us what? some more facts. Um, no, I've got you, um, Aesop's Fables. No, but you had some more facts you told me that were dead good. I just wondered if Steve knew them. What? What do you want to know? The ones that you read out to me. You had, um, you had one about a, uh, the spiky thing. Go on. Porcupine. Give yeah. me a clue. How many spikes has a porcupine got? Don't know. How many was it? I think it was about 10,000. But, I, I, these aren't, these aren't the most interesting facts, are they? It's alright. <laughs> it's alright though, isn't it? Yeah. And he went, but how can they say that? You could say that, uh, uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of hairs in our head. I went ten, a hundred thousand average. You went, yeah, but I haven't. So how do we know that that porcupine that they've counted is the same for all of them? <laughs> <laughs> might have had alopecia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have been a particularly hairy one. You know what I mean, right? You've got a. a, a do you know? Do you know what a fable is? I tried to explain briefly. Do you, do you know what a fable I've is? Got Carl? a rough idea. Okay, it, it's a thing that uses sort of uh, metaphor analogy just to 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 explain sort of uh, 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 morals. I mean, they're they're very they're very very old for a start, and it's all. Thi um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, uh, oh, a quick one. Oh, the one about the the um, the dog with two bones. Uh, he goes to a, a dog's got a bone. He sees its reflection in the lake, and he thinks, "Oh, that dog's got a nice bone." I love that. And as he goes to get that one in reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about you know. I think I was, uh, I was told one when I was younger. Go on. Uh, I think it was one. <laughs> this young lad, he's got a dog, right? And he's sort of is about eight years old, and this dog he's had it since he was about four, and it's a bit tired now, and he chucks sticks for it, and it doesn't it doesn't go for it, and uh, he's saying to his mum, "Oh, I want a new dog." Because this one's useless, it doesn't do what, you know, it doesn't have any fun with me. So they say, oh no, but you know, Rover's a good little dog, you should look after it. And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't like it, I want a new one. So they buy him a new puppy, and it's it's running around, yapping about, and he's loving it, and he's playing around with it in the grass. And then uh, one day he goes to the park, and he's messing about and rolling about with it, and he falls into the lake, <laughs> right? And the little puppy's like, yapping at him, and he's going, help me, help me, the little, little dog's yapping. And then the old dog comes and gets his collar, and it pulls him out of the lake, and he goes, oh, God, you know, why did I forget about you? You're the better dog. And he loved that one again rather than the puppy. I got a feeling that was Lassie. <laughs> well, yeah, that was an episode of Lassie. <laughs> what well, was, what's the moral? Hooban. What's the moral there, Carl? What, what's that telling? What, what's that explaining through analogy? Sort of, don't forget the old. <laughs> Look after old people. <laughs> I remember there was one I heard once about a young boy who, who got trapped in a lake inside a, a, cage. a cage. But he, he, he loved his trainers so much. He loved his trainers so much he wasn't going to get them wet. And but the even though he had came, to get out there... And even though he thought that was the important thing because it's material value, he actually drowned and the trainers were no good to him then. I'll say that. Hives, I hate to say I told you so. Now I want to uh, clear a couple of things up. Um, obviously, me and Steve, we, we love Carl. This is not, this is, the things we give Carl to read and talk about, is not to embarrass him or stress him out at all. We genuinely like his view of the world. Yep. In fact, we did an interview yesterday with a bloke from the Standard who really liked the show and said, do, do you like Carl? Because you take the piss out of him a lot. And, um, you know, we, we just like to say, we love Carl. I said to that bloke, I said, it's like I've got a new kitten. I can't wait to get in and see his little face. On Saturdays, didn't I? Yes. And uh, uh, I think I'm worried because I thought I'd give Carl something he was really get his teeth into with his Aesop fables. It involves animals and you know little stories. But I've given him a couple, and he doesn't seem to be that impressed or understand the the concept. It's just that what. you said you'd bring in an animal fact book as well, and I can't see that anywhere. No, <laughs> well you can only read one book at a time, can't well, you? Why didn't you bring the other one in first? Well, it's big. I've, I've got to work my way up to it. Sometimes I'll probably have to get a cab because it's a bit big. Now listen, I'll give, it, give this one. This is an easy one. Now just think, right? Think just what it means. They're not that. They're not that hidden. They're not that cryptic. Just think what this means, okay? Okay. When the hares addressed a public meeting and claimed that all should have fair shares, the lions answered, "A good speech, hairy feet, but it lacks claws and teeth such as we have." How would you use that? No. 
What, what do you think that means? This is this this translated from the I don't know, uh, Greek or something. I don't know. It was it was Aesop. Where's he from? Greek. Yeah. So it you know it, it should I should I do it in my own language? Okay. Um. So what what would happen if there's 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 hares and they have a meeting in the jungle with like loads of lions and go hey hold on wait a minute I think we should all be equal and share everything all right and the lions go well yeah it's easy for you to say we've got claws and teeth. Yeah. What does that mean? It's saying like uh, coarser hares want that because it's better for them. The lions get nothing out of it because they're already king of the jungle. That's right. So it's ne it's ne it's negotiating from weakness. Anyone can negotiate from strength, but negotiating from weakness is your it's it's you know it's it's be lovely. It's a lovely utopian look at the animal kingdom. But the way you said it is better than the way they worded it. <laughs> well, that's uh, because but that's because uh, Ricky's very much the modern Lisa. <laughs> I mean, many people have thought that. You know, that's why he's getting a lot of awards with the TV show. <laughs> For him, Thank that's, you. that's a favourite. So look, AR, take that home, and read ones you like, and tell me about the ones you like, ones that click. I don't care if you only come in with like one or two. Go, I'll tell you what, Rick, that's a mate, that there's one thing that I've learned from that. You know, because sometimes you can know all these phrases, and until something happens, you don't, you don't think, you know, you, everyone's heard, you know, to, um, I don't know, to err is human, to forgive divine. But, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any, Steve, I found? <gasps> Wait, what's that? A fable. Uh, well, I would imagine that the most famous one I've always remembered is the, uh, you know, the, the lion with the, uh, the thing in its hoof. Do you remember that? Paw. The, the lion, yeah, with, the, with the, the, the spike in its paw, and a smaller animal gets it out for it, but it still attacks it anyway. Well, that's life, isn't it? Well. I read one the other day, actually, which was very interesting. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh, yeah. Which he said, uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake, wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back. We'll go across. It'll be brilliant. He goes, well, no, you'll just sting me. He goes, don't be stupid. If I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drown. And he goes, oh, fair enough. Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. Yeah. And the bear is wading through the water. Yeah. So mm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both going to die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was going to say, I can swim. <laughs> 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 ah, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about, um... Do, does that mean anything to you? It's my nature, i.e., you know, that's in that's, my nature. That's the way it is. That's, that's what I do, yeah. I'm a scorpion. Yeah. One of my favourite ones... These, these don't mean anything to you, do they? I mean, what the I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about this? What about this one? Don't trust yeah. bears or here's, one, here's one of my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't, he said, well, why not just say, don't trust bears? <laughs> the, bear, the bear's the one that was too trustworthy. Don't trust scorpions. Yeah. Right. Here's one of my favourite ones of all time, okay? Um, uh, a lion is dying. He's an old lion. He's in the front of his cave. And all the animals come around, like the foxes and the hyenas and, and, the, and the, uh, the rabbits, and they're all taking the piss out of him, and they're laughing at him, and they're laughing and going, you can't fight us now, kind of, and just before he dies, he goes, fine, but I was a lion once. Uh, what does that mean? Don't know. Well, he's saying, it's better to have lived and had what I had, because I was, I was great, if only for a short time. And you lot are still alive, but you're nothing. You're, mm. you're rabbits and hares. I was a lion once, so, you know, I'm Are they happy. always using animals for these stories? <laughs> well, yeah, I could, I could change it to refrigerators and household appliances if it would make it help, but animals, you know... Uh, <laughs> I remember the one about being ill a lot, and you say something about... Um, Go on. Uh, you know... If you keep doing that, if you keep having time off, well, I won't believe you. That's the boy who cried wolf. Is yeah. that what? Yeah. Do you know yeah, that one? Have you heard I, the I famous know. one? This is probably the most powerful one. When you're pulling a face, and they say, well, if you keep doing that, the wind changes. I've heard that. Because like yeah. yeah. you know that's scientifically proven. That is. That can happen. That can happen. Should we yeah. have hip hop hooray? Yeah. Are you queued up for that? No, but go on, you. Uh... Carl, sort it out, mate. I was going to. No, come on, this is what I asked you to play, mate. If you've not, you know, you're getting too big for your boots now with your showbiz lifestyle. You're not paying yeah. attention, are you? You're not playing yeah. the record if you want you to play. Heat magazine's favourite. Yeah. Okay, so, um... I've oh, you dropped that. You've been very clumsy. Oh. You know, you're, uh, you know, with the big I can't you're believe you're not... Oh, fables are great. He's not impressed, is he, really? No, I am. I, I mean, you know, once I get to take this book home tonight and that, and yeah. have, a, have a read, I might, I might change my mind on them next week. You're coming all stressed. I'm not, I'm not impressed with the ones you've you've been talking about. I must admit. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, th- sure. this album is by this group Nerd, who are big uh, hip hop and R&B oh, producers so in the States. Yeah. We've played a track from them in the past, Bobby James. This album's been re-recorded, I don't know why exactly, with live instruments. You don't get many R&B and hip hop records now with live instruments, so it's pretty... It's, so it's computers, same. isn't it, Steve, <laughs> these days, and drum machines. And uh, there is a forthcoming single, I suspect it might be this track, Rockstar. I'm not going to play that, I'm going to play a track to Things Are Gonna Get Better. order here to stay sadly we're not here to stay steve we've only got about two more minutes that's true enough yeah well i think that's just time for some interesting facts that uh, johnny mango our researcher from uh, loosecontrol.com has uh, emailed us a few uh, familiar ones favorite ones of yours i think Go um on. any ones i don't know though i don't i think you know this one don't you a pig's orgasm lasts for 30 minutes i know and uh, a pig can't actually look directly up wouldn't it thought directly up. 30 minutes of coming <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> Um, Daddy, be careful here. That's incredible. Remember what happened to Tom Bins. Go on. Humans and dolphins are the only species that have sex for pleasure. Uh, bonobos do as well, they've rediscovered. Was which it is it? Which is a... Uh, bonobo? Uh, yeah. Um, a, 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 a chimpanzee. Like a chimpanzee. Right. So, yeah. So it's three now. Can't believe dolphins are getting... They're more three. Actually, they're, all, they're all at it now. <laughs> dolphins get more <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, polar bears are left-handed. Yeah. It's it's yeah. I yeah. don't quite know how they work that out. Did they give them spelling tests? Or uh, lighting tests. Oh yeah, they probably just do it. Do it. It's probably the paw they use to hide up the, the black nose during a hunt. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, some lions mate over fifty times a day. Yeah, not not every day of the year. Okay, they don't do that every day. No. Okay, because no. again, I'm worried. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> start, you know, I didn't think that dolphins. What day of the year do you do it fifty times? What, <laughs> is it? It's coming up to it. It's April, isn't it? You'd like to get out there. I have a special day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could we could coincide that with the uh, balloon event. <laughs> It'll just me, be me quietly humping in the corner. <laughs> Volunteers, welcome to email now, you know. Um, <laughs> and it, all, all the proceeds go to charity. If you are a desperate lioness. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, butterflies taste with their feet. I didn't know that. Interesting. I didn't know that. That is interesting. But they don't eat much, do they? Because they only live a day. Good point. They wouldn't need to eat. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh... Yeah. But Carl, how big are your eyes? <laughs> Finally, I think we've discussed this before, haven't we? A cockroach will live nine days without its head yeah. before it starves to death. Yeah, that's only because it can't get water and food yet. It would, it would be quite happy going around doing its normal things. Yeah. I mean, Probably if, to work. if you're just as good without your head as with your head... May as well not have a head. I just... I don't see the point. Well, that was uh, thanks to Johnny Mango there of... Uh, what's his website called? Uh, Who's turned into a sort of... Uh, volunteered uh, uh, researcher. Yeah. He's very fast. Losecontrol.com. Can I just say as well, we've had lots of emails from different people just uh, saying they enjoy the show and offering little tidbits and things. Uh, Nick Wilson, Sarah and Lauren, Ken, Dan, Jane, she wanted some ash, we didn't play ash, never mind. Oh. Lee, Jez, Derry, there's loads of people there. Well, I'm gonna, uh, again, we were talking earlier about, you know, you not caring about being like a, a geek or a freak oh, or right, not trendy. Not. No, I'm just saying. I am trendy, I am. And I know, yeah. And uh, I'm going to play a bit of an easy listening. I apologise to those people who still tune in expect to um, hear two hours of new metal or gorillas. Um, and this is a uh, very old-fashioned, lovely tune. It's bread. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, bread. bread. <laughs> New order. Here to stay on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With we're, we're here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> of the next two hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Steve Merchant there. Hello there. We're here with our producer here, Carl Pilton. We'll be talking to Carl a little bit later because um, we've got to have his thoughts on Aesop's fables, continuing the, the education of, of Carl. We've got some great music coming up. Very good music. A little bit of, uh, oh, what have we got? Like Happy Mondays. Baddy Drawn Boy. Yeah, all that. Bob Dylan. All sorts. All sorts coming up. So yeah, um, Rick, I don't know, I just wanted to bring your attention to this. Uh, yeah. Someone passed this on to me. It's from the uh, Guardian's Media website. There's a sort of website that's dedicated to kind of media information. Is this about our complaint? Well, it, the headline is Comedian Rapped Over Radio Innuendo. Right. Uh, Jessica Hodgson has uh, written the article. Well, are you familiar with this? Have you well, seen this? be careful now because we actually got a complaint, and a lot of people don't know this, we got a complaint upheld. And, um, well, all of this we're, is... We're in, very sorry. We, did, we didn't mean to offend. Um, and it was a while ago, uh, so we are going to be very careful. Carl's getting very nervous. We're just going to read out. We're not going to editorialise, Carl. We're just going to read out what The Guardian printed about us, all right? Okay. Comedian Ricky Gervais has had a dressing down from a broadcasting watchdog for his repeated use of the word cock in a lunchtime radio show. <laughs> that's all right. That's what that's it says, fine. Carl. That's what it, I just he's not, he's not going to say it is, again. He's not, yeah, yeah. Go Imagine on. this is the news and yeah. I'm reading it. Yeah. 
the Broadcasting Standards Commission upheld a complaint against the comedian for coarse sexual innuendo yeah. in the programme on London Station XFM. The Commission acknowledged that the presenter's remarks were intended to be humorous, but took the view that the amount and detail of the coarse sexual innuendo had exceeded acceptable boundaries for broadcast, said the BSC, uh, BSC in a statement. The complaint objected to a section in the comic's Saturday afternoon show when he discussed the different meanings of the word cock. Gervais wondered aloud whether the word was acceptable when discussing birds, but not the male sexual organ. A BSC spokesman said the comedian went on and on about it for nearly five minutes. XFM, a self-styled alternative radio station, said in its defence that its remit was to provide cutting-edge programmes for a youth audience. The station said the programme's brief was to include elements of alternative comedy within certain shows that would not fit within a more mainstream radio station format. In this particular show, it was not the presenter's intention to shock when they took a humorous look at how the English language could be construed in different ways within different contexts. Gervais, whose big break was on Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, has shot to household status through the portrayal of David Brent, the middle manager from hell in BBC Two's cult show, The Office. Just in case you didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's a household bit. name, yeah. but they just thought... You might not have heard of him, but he is a household name. Now, um, that, that's good. That's good reporting, and they're quite right about it. And just to remind people, it was when Steve said the only um, uh, bird that hasn't got a penis is the swan, and I went on about the male bird being called the cock, but I couldn't use that to mean, and, you know, it was, it, it was childish, yeah. you know. But what, what annoys me is, I'm sure I've heard things on, like, Radio 1, like that. Oh, what's the, uh, the, uh, what's her name in the morning, Sarah? Uh, Cox. Yeah. And, uh, as there's a DJ, like, like, Carl, um... Uh, Cox? Yeah, so you've got... <laughs> Carl. What's the matter? I'm just saying. You're just saying... There, there's a pair of... DJs on, yeah, but you we've know. We've done this. And uh, what are you talking about? We're just talking about names. They're just saying the names. Now I love Cox in the morning. You're a big fan. You're a big fan of Cox. Oh. And at night, what's the matter with you? Come on, Carl. Call? All right. We've taken it. We've been. Have you actually been wrapped over this? Have no. You, I don't know what. Have that you means. had a dressing day? No. When did that happen? I don't know. I, I was I'm meant to tell you, and I never got round to it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks then. So don't do it again. <laughs> Pinky Afro on XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, can I, can I just add that in case yes. you don't know what what you know the What's frequency, frequency is. is? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why, 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 why do they say that? Are they not, so, so you know what you listen to. So you go. I tell you what. I like that radio station. Yeah. And it was XFM 104.9. Exactly, exactly. I listen to that again. You listen to that. You can retune. Yeah. I was wondering actually, Rick. Stay like, locked up this end of the <laughs> dial. True enough. Um, I was wondering, because, you know, obviously we, we're still trying to campaign to get Carl into air, into the air. Yeah. Uh, with the balloon, uh, enterprise, and obviously the work's been done on that, don't fret, don't worry. A lot of people are asking for an update, but, you know, we'll obviously let you know when it's all going to take place. Yeah. But I was wondering These whether... These things take time. Exactly, but I was wondering whether we should also have another kind of campaign, some kind of campaign, maybe one that could involve you, Rick. Because oh. I'm obviously... No, I'm particularly concerned, Carl, I don't know how familiar you are with this, with Ricky's eating habits. Mm. Because he just he's so, he eats so unhealthily. No, I, it scares I, I, me. No, come on, Rick, don't give no, me I'm this. No, I'm getting better now. No, you're not getting better. I have a smoothie every day. Yeah, but I've told you before that's largely sugar. No, a homemade one. I don't care, Rick. That's not enough. It can't counteract. Right, this is idea. This is Ricky Gervais's <laughs> idea of healthy eating. Right, we'll be in the canteen at the BBC. He'll go. I'm going to be eat healthy today, which means he'll have two slices of pizza instead of pizza and chips. That's basically the, the, that's his theory, right? And it's like it's I don't know what because he can't eat anything which is kind of which doesn't is basically doesn't sting the roof of his mouth with, <laughs> with flavour. So like for instance, he, he's always yeah. got headaches. He's always kind of got a headache. I guess because you don't you just drink coffee and coke. You never drink water. Your your body is dehydrated. And I said to him, drink a glass of water. No, boring. <laughs> it's boring, boar. <laughs> I don't know if if we were in the desert stranded. Boring. It's boring, Steve. I'll wait till the next cafe. <laughs> Uh, right, and sometimes you'll go like, oh, we'll have a, let's have a, I'll have a salad, right? I mean, he'll get like a feta cheese salad, right? And he'll eat the little bits of feta cheese, leave the salad. <laughs> then he goes downstairs and goes, I'm still hungry. It didn't fill me up, that salad. I go, no, what didn't fill you up was the 200 milligrams of goat cheese that you <laughs> ate. That's what didn't fill you up. Uh. So I just, this should be a campaign. I don't know whether it, I can observe it, people could sponsor him, something. Just eat healthy, we could do it for some kind Send of big charity. Fruit. I don't think the fruit's the issue, Okay, really. if you mash it, I'll, I'll eat anything Rick, I'm not mashed. saying that you don't eat a certain amount of fruit. I'm saying that everything else you eat is unbalanced, and it's just rich with fat, and it's awful. 
Yeah. It's sausages, it's beans. You're such a working class scum, aren't you? <laughs> it's the smell of chip fat is all around him. Do you know what I mean? It's like even when you can't smell it, you know it's there seeping through his veins. Like, I imagine when he was growing up, it was just chip fat it was. in the house. Just a big It was. Oh, constantly boiling. It always there was always chips on with everything. Exactly. Yeah, or fried. Do you want wheat in the morning? Deep fat yeah. fry that. <laughs> It's such scum. And now it's like, oh yeah, my palate, you know, I can't eat anything. It's got no flavour. Everything's got to have cheese on it. Sprinkling Parmesan cheese. More Parmesan cheese. And if someone, like, doesn't give him, like, a whole tub of Parmesan cheese when you're in a restaurant, even though he's ordered, like, a lobster or whatever, <laughs> he's like, he, he sort of has a go at the waiter, or, like, not not to their face. Obviously, he's too much of a coward, but he'll say to me, like, he didn't reach and left the cheese. They said, cheat with the cheese. They don't give me any cheese. He just gave you three bucketfuls. Oh, it's a cheese. I should... it's more cheese here. Uh, it's pathetic. Oh, so I God. just think we should do something to because I'm panicked, I'm worried, well, you know, I'm worried I started for your working out a little bit, I sort of work out twice or three times a week. I don't think week. that's gonna counteract it, Rick. And I drink water through the night when I wake up, I'm dehydrated. From all the booze you've just drunk. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I have a smoothie in the morning, don't I? I don't, I, oh, you know what my views are on the smoothies, I don't think that's <laughs> counteracting. You're Andy Smoothie, you are, oh, you're Andy Smoothie. Because I don't think it's counteracting all the mate. other You problems. have got a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the smoothie. Right, oh. fine, okay, well if you, if you, if you're happy to carry on as you are. Yeah, go on. Um, Badly Drawn Boy, obviously, has done the soundtrack Loving of this it. new film, uh, About a Boy. Yeah. Which has got Hugh Grant in it. And, obviously, uh, this current single, uh, what's it called, the, the current one that's out? The Silent Sigh, that's currently, obviously, that's being played on XFM. But this is another track from this album, which is the soundtrack. Lots of, kind of, uh, little bits of filler, bits of musical instrumental stuff, but all of it's very nice. This is a cracking tune, track three, Something to Talk About. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, good tune that, I think. Uh, Sarah and Lauren have uh, emailed in. They said they wanted something from Elliot Smith or maybe Jimmy Webb. That's actually produced by the producer of Elliot Smith. And Is that a, a, I haven't brought any Jimmy Webb into that. No, we'll maybe play that next time. I'll play some next, yeah, yeah, play some next week. That's Badly Drawn Boy, though, from the uh, soundtrack to this film About a Boy, and that's called uh, Something to Talk About. We've only got the stuff in the library. Do they want Four Non Blondes? Because <laughs> we've got that in the library, haven't we? The oh, best of Tony Basil. And we've got um, uh, just about every song that Excess ever recorded. Exactly. We don't play enough Excess. do I we? don't think we do, do <laughs> we? No. no. I yes. can't believe it. Uh, um, yeah. XFM 104.9 coming up. White Van Man. White Van Carl. White Van Carl. Uh, I was uh, obviously out with Carl last night. A lot oh of yeah. Realise this because we went out. There's uh, what's the name of that evening? Marketplace Extracurricular. Extracurricular. Yeah, various uh, XFM DJs go down there and just play an eclectic mix. Just spin some tunes. Off. Absolutely. And I'm thinking of doing it in a couple of weeks, Rick. And obviously, you know, my turntablist skills now are, uh, are yeah. pretty. Yeah. Something yeah. to behold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I tell you this, what I did an amazing mix the other day with my friend Dan. We did. Yeah. We spent two and a half hours on it. This is how we spend our evenings now: two and a half hours mixing from a trip hop sort of art, you know, hip hop style beat into uh, Arthur's theme by Christopher Cross. Great. When tune. you get caught between the moon and New written York by City. four people, four people. Bacharach, yeah. Carol Biasaga, Christopher Cross, and a fourth one. Absolutely. Phone in if you know that. Maybe we should. But um, who, who knows the fourth person credited on that tune? If I were a prize, seven hundred, eight hundred. One, two, three, four. Also, I want someone else to phone in. Right? I saw I saw an advert. Right? There's a, those are what, toys. I think it must be. Is it because it's uh, Easter holidays or something? Right. And I was watching that, and there's uh, one of those transformer type things, and it goes in its shield. It strikes and then goes into its shield, and it goes into a little pod. And I'm sure it was called a bowlock. <laughs> right. Now I, I must have misheard it. There's no way you can call a little kid's toy a bowlock. So can you phone in? I'm I, I'm quite willing to be wrong. It'd be very disappointing. But, you know, are people making little bowlocks for kids? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what was the other question? Was there the, uh, the other question was who uh, oh, was, was the fourth, fourth person, person who wrote, wrote uh, Arthur's theme? Yeah. When you get caught between the noon and New York City. It's uh, crazy, but it's true. true. Yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But well, was that with Carl last night, obviously party animal, you know, he's hanging out with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? It's all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, you, you're joking. No. Go on. And, um, I was there in the toilets, right, and I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh, there you go, that's, uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the I little one. It, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> that was you genuine. thought he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye by calling her Left Eye Lopez. Yeah, yeah. That's genius. Don't worry, we put him to we put we put him right. It's okay. Yeah, it's that easy. Yeah, but you were worried for a while, weren't you? You were anxious for a while. I, I, I had no idea. And the thing is, 
I heard that on like Thursday, so for like three days I've been thinking. You've been panicking. Why she called that? Because she changed the name before, hasn't she? To J Lo or something. Yeah. So I thought, you know. Yeah. And she got some people after her. Does she owe someone money? <laughs> Keep changing yeah. her name. That was Wobby Gabrielle <laughs> and Rise. <laughs> 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 anyway, more music, Ray? Oh, I'd love to. So yeah, yeah. What have you got? What have you got lined up there, Carl? Beat a band? Oh yeah, 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 yeah,
Travis, Flowers in the Window on XFM 104.9. Well, coming to that time where we do White Van Man. Absolutely, with uh, producer Carl. And uh, Carl's gonna also going to be uh, telling us uh, his, uh, his slant on fables on Aesop. Absolutely. Um, I was out with Carl. I know I shouldn't be. Yeah, well, I, I broke the rule as well. I know. Time. Well, I was out with him the night before, I think. And uh, we were just chatting. And um, as you know, uh, we're, uh, we're going to Edinburgh uh, for a week. Um, yeah, that's all three of us. That's all three of us, yeah. It wasn't, and I just wondered for a minute there if there was some arrangement you two had made. Like next <laughs> no. weekend, just popping out there, seeing the sights. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to do a, a week's broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, you know, and Carl's going, I bet you lie in, don't you, and all this. And I was going, well, yeah, he's going, well, he wants to be up at half nine and out looking at the sights, you know God. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and I said, uh, have you ever had haggis? And he went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's mints. He went, I like mints. I went, yeah, but wait, it's mints in a sheep stomach, right? And he went, what, they force feed a sheep, then kill it? <laughs> Imagine that, Carl. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make sense. They force feed a sheep mints, and then kill it, till its stomach's nice and full, and they go, oh, this one's full, kill it, before it starts digesting it. Of course they don't. It's a membrane, they've... And the other one, he was talking about, like, um, he likes Richmond Park. He goes, I like to see all the deers. I went, it's deers, plural, you don't need to say. Deers. I try and educate them whenever I can. What's that one? I said that deer is already yeah, deer is yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish. So you can say fishes. And, uh, and, uh, we were laughing at us. I said, um, do you know the, um, plural of, uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people think it would be mongoose. It's not, it's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose, yes. Plural of mongoose? It's, it's worth a competition. No, it's not. No. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> <laughs> play a record after this white van, man. Do you want to play, uh... Oh, let's play a bit of Dylan, yeah. Um, this is, this is a, 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 a beautiful track. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Just Like a Woman. <laughs> well, I think that's a beautiful record. Uh, it's by Bob Dylan, and it's Just Like a Woman. And... Carl went, he's got his headphones on, so he's speaking a bit loud. The harmonica's in, playing. In, in, a, in a whiny, mank accent, when the harmonica's going, that's an annoying sound, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> God. Oh, bless Bob him. Dylan there. An annoying sound there. Did you Bob hear about... The annoying sound of Bob Dylan, like a <laughs> yeah. new album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just that sort of sound always reminds me of um, a one-man band. Yeah. Have you heard the story about Leo Sayer with his song, One Man Band? No. Years ago, wh what year was... Um, Oh, God. Is I'm in the mood for dancing? Uh, what's the song that he did about a one-man band? I'm a one-man band, it was called. Right, yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, Go on. He did that, one-man band, and he was playing it at the Dominion Theatre. Yeah. And apparently, whenever he played, he, he sort of sang this song, he got the audience involved, and the line in it was, I'm a one-man band. One Nobody man knows or understands. Is there anybody there can lend me a hand right. to my one-man band? He said that, and what he used to do, he used to reach out oh, and, yeah. and grab people's hands, and then he'd walk down the middle. <laughs> anyway, he said, well, anyone lend me a hand? And he stuck his hand out, grabbed like a hand, and was walking down, Every lo everyone looked horrified, and some woman, who had like a plastic hand, it had come off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was walking down the middle of like Dominion Theatre with his plastic hand in his hand. <laughs> and he said, oh, it's a moment I won't forget. <laughs> he knows how to tell a story, Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask them, you know, typical man on the street, the, uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, it's the came out and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, she, uh, she got booed at her uh, premiere of her, her new film, Britney, because she, uh, she'd left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. 3,000 of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just w went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even want to shake their hands, sign any autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was like, say, outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um... So she did wave. Then. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. 
He's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. But who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> so exactly. He's just me. winging it. Judge's first judge, was it raining? No? Yeah. Oh shit, I was, I was relying on that. Uh, it was raining. Um, <laughs> was she hmm. running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside, they're not going to start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise. He's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but... He's a smaller like, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, An point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean... <laughs> But you're going to still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City. He's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here. Mm. You need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench. Yeah. Uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. And people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know England's people, not nodding off on a on a park bench, which is a bit daft. Because <laughs> they were like, shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, no, he should is be that? looking so after England's was people. Eight, was this the sixteenth century you went back to? <laughs> what do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah, they were, like they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure, he probably had under cover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and he know, might not, he might not have been there at all. So you know, it was, you know, so yeah. he probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going I think up. There's enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, okay. you're happy then. Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit. When I, when I go on holiday, I like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, no. do I. see it happening. No. You've been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about. Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If yep. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay. It's really good. And uh, what do you make of the so solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. About about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that... Were they I all had... there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, I couldn't remember all their faces <laughs> to um, feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. He had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Two of them, had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on? Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, so solid poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. Just about to beat that's me off a great walking. dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing I love that. That's, we've all had, 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> oh my goodness. What oh if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm oh wearing God. a t shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the I, It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, so <laughs> you should. You know no, what I mean? You, you do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do, thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah, thanks. But you know that, th I think you might mention before, that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it, if you don't... But apparently uh, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably work a lot, a lot of people have been joking. Face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So, yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Oh, got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've, I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got, um... It, what they used to do at school is, uh... <laughs> okay. If you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. Okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. 
And sure. I went up, and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> can't play a record, mate. Well done, though. Great Were you the there. first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> they mounted an entire ceremony just to encourage you. <laughs> Wise words there from Bella Sebastian <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Match and I see Well, I mean, it is indeed wise words, Rick. I'm worried that people are going to get out of the office now and into the sunshine not be listening to the show. There's always the transistor radio. <laughs> That's true enough. Um, indeed, any to the part, take well, it along. It is time. Keep it low, though. Don't want to irritate other people. No, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if, if you do want to irritate them, spit on them, it's better. <laughs> exactly. Um, and kick them and throw little rocks. <laughs> exactly. With me, Carl, Kamer and Pilkington, we are now... We're into this, wh way into the second month of the education of Carl. As you know, Carl got one GCSE in history, and he, and uh, we've been, uh, we've been cramming, haven't we? Oh, and, really, uh, before you mention that, can I on. just say something? Um, obviously we do always do this thing with the sun, uh, White Van Man, where we read this thing out from the sun and query, uh, Carl. And I was out with some friends last night, and my friend Dan always listens to the show, and he said, um, Carl, you, you know, you, I love the bit when you, you answer the questions in the, in the sun. Why, do you have, do you ever know what the questions are before they're asked, or is that your first answer? And, uh, Carl said, no, that is it. They don't let me see what the questions are first. They don't show them to me, and I always get, always get really anxious and really get really paranoid. And I was just wondering, have you seen the error there, Carl? Have you seen the mistake you've been making? Right? You're you worried that, you're worried that you didn't get the questions beforehand, right? Well, what? How could you, how, how could, could you, you maybe combat that, do you think? How could you combat that if you're really nervous, uh, you know, coming Maybe you to wanted work. to sort of have some views or ideas well, beforehand. It's, it's, it's your error, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's your show if, uh, if you want to, like, take a chance with me. No, 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 so his point is this, that if you're really worried about that, how could you, how could you get hold of those questions in advance? Is there any way you could get hold of those questions in advance? Yeah, but is it always in, in today's? <laughs> is it always in Saturdays? Yes. So they don't do that every day of the week? They do, but I always take it from this Saturday. Right, well, yeah, I could, but that would cost me money. I'm not on enough as it is, sure. working here on Saturday. <laughs> okay. How much is the sun? 30p. Yeah, well... <laughs> You're not made of money. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, um, it's 40p on a Saturday. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you were studying Aesop's fables, weren't you, this week? Now, mm. now I, I'm, I'm going to very, be very liberal here and let you talk about it. I'm not, it's not, not a test. I'm not, hey, man, just, like, chill out. I'm not this, like, rigid sort of, you know, uh, boxing society. Just, just tell us your views. Just tell us your vibe on Aesop. Tell us something. What have you learned from these fables? He uh, made a bit of money out of something that's quite simple. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he did make any money. I, I mean, it, it, you know, I think it was published like thousands of years <laughs> after his death. But go on. Yeah, they're just just little stories. I mean, uh, enjoyed them. Yeah. But didn't learn anything from them. Okay. Or did or did you? You see, because it's teaching through sort of like metaphor and analogy, and maybe it, it all seeps in and it's all subliminal, and maybe in a way your no, your it's, subconscious it's is silly. teaching the, you. No, it's if, silly. If, Rick, if, it is silly. If, if if the stories were done in like a real way, that there's like a a man and a woman, and, and it's a little story that something happens to them in life, then you learn something. But it's all about, you know, a gorilla and a fox uh, are walking through the woods. How often does that happen? <laughs> sure. So you're Good saying point. if it was more like, if kind of... If it was more true to life. If it was more like, maybe, if it was more like yours. real yeah. stories, like, you know, a kid on his grifter and a, a magpie picking it, you know, pecking at his head, or yeah. two frog boys <laughs> with webbed hands. I mean, if it was real stories from real life... That people could believe yeah, that actually, it happened. Maybe, you know, it, it would teach us something. But why not do that? Like, take a real situation. Say, like, the So Solid crew guy... Yes. ...going down for carrying a gun. Use that in some way. Do you know what I mean? As a warning, maybe, about carrying guns? What about something yeah. like, if you carry guns and that is illegal, do you, you could have some sort of punishment? Yeah, that's, that's good. good so yeah, that's it mean, doesn't yeah. bother you then that the fact that these fables have been used for many, many generations to educate maybe young children or even older people, the fact that they've served a brilliant function and they've become classics, that doesn't bother you? You've seen through them? Well, they don't always work. Okay. Uh, when I was out with Rick the other day, he brought one up. Oh, I told him the one about the, uh, the, the, the two mice, the industrious mouse who... Um, throughout the summer, he would be storing berries, nuts and berries, and he'd be storing it, and the other ones would just be eating off the trees and running around and having a laugh. And they'd go, well, you're going to become hungry. And they'd go, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes to it. And they'd do that, and he'd be storing his nuts and berries, and autumn came, and the mouse was still playing and not doing anything. And then winter came, and the, and the silly mouse was, like, shivering. And he went and knocked on the, the mouse's door and went, I'm freezing and I'm starving. And the, and the clever mouse said, well, I told you, didn't I? You know, you should have been storing your nuts through winter like I did. Come in and share mine. You know, and 
What did you say, Carl? Well, and the moral of that is whatever. Well, uh, 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 yeah, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just be careful. Uh, but my thing is that, that it's not very good because the moral of that is do what you want and there's always a, a, a do-gooder or a chair there. Yeah, so, that's right, sure. Yeah. But, um, but the way I, wa you know, I think, which is more sort of 2002, <laughs> the ending should have been, uh, you know, the guy with all the berries should have, like, been, like, going, oh, I'll be all right come the winter. I've got loads of food, I'll be safe. But then as he's going into his little hut at the beginning of the winter, some sort of bus or something comes and kills him. Right. And it's like... You should have parted hard because yeah, you might die. Yeah, enjoy life whilst you've got it. Yeah. Okay, and if winter comes, just starve to death. <laughs> well, you know, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, okay. Yeah. See, I'm wondering fables. if there's a new book here. I really am worried, <laughs> wondering like, if there's uh, a Carl's so like, Fables. He's, he's been coming out with the sum all week. He keeps going, well, that's a fable, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your favourite fable in there? Have you learned anything from this book? Uh, to get, you know, is there one fable you liked? Yeah, I mean, they're, all, like? they're all all right. What did you like? Uh, you've thrown it on me now, there. Didn't you like one about a crab, you said? No, that was the one about messing about on a cliff edge or something. Don't what? mess about on a cliff edge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I w there's not many around here, so I didn't take much interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God. Um, I'm doing my best here. I'm you don't remember yeah, anything. Here's one. Yeah, on. here's one that was quite nice. Uh, there was a belly, you know, like your stomach. Yeah. And, uh, and it's this belly on a pair of legs. And the legs were saying, I'm more important than you because I, I, carry, I carry you around. And the belly said, yeah, but, you know, if it weren't for me... Holding all this food, you wouldn't have the energy to walk around here, yeah. and that means like, you know, rather than working on your own, it's best to work in a team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Good. well, the one, the one similar to that I was taught when I was little was um, um, a vision of uh, heaven and hell, and uh, in it went down to hell, and in hell, right, there was these you know, people had like twenty foot long um, chopsticks. Yeah. And they they were getting their food, and they would they couldn't get the chopsticks into the food and get it round their mouth because they were just too long. Right. right, and that was how. And in heaven, they had exactly the same thing, but they were feeding each other. What? Right. You don't like Chinese food? Is that what you're concerned? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're concerned is, Carl? No, I'm just. My, see, my, the one I remember, and I, I can't remember the ending, uh, it's about two nuns in a bath. Yeah, oh, I know. I can't yeah. remember what it is. Yeah, that's that it, one. yeah. Or is it, are they on a bike? They're, 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 that's two adventures, it's the same nuns, <laughs> the but same they go to all sorts of adventures. They, they're they, normally they, quite they... erotic adventures. Yeah, well, they are, but there was one when they're driving down a cobbled street, I remember. <laughs> oh, go on, go on. And then there's the other, then of course they get... Whale Bones, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl. Well, um, Carl, I, I really don't think you got your teeth into the fables, really. I don't think you... There wasn't anything to learn. I read a couple, thought, yeah, that's all right, and put it down again. There wasn't anything to learn. It was all stuff I knew already, <laughs> but made up with nice little foxes and bears and stuff. So... Yeah. But that, that one about, like... That's one we spoke about, like, uh, when the hares are going, we should share all our food. And the lion said, that's a good argument, but you haven't got, it hasn't got the teeth and claws that we've got. That's lovely. Because it's sort of like, you know, that's an in indictment on, mm. sort of, you know, you could say it's an anti-equality almost. You know, you could get really sort of deep into that. You, you know what I mean? You could, no? Big oh, philosophical I'm... ideas in a nutshell. Not interesting? No, not really. Um, okay. Okay, then, well, th you're going to hate this then. I've brought in the concise Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. Now, just look at some of your favourites. I suggest going to straight to things like um, Wilde or uh, Newton or Churchill or um You're a big Keats. fan of Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, well, he's, he's, he's the boy. Yeah, right, well, okay, let's uh, go through that old chrome. Blah, blah. Newton, right. Um, right, here's a famous one, okay? This is Isaac Newton. If I have seen further... It is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Do you like that one? So there's a meaning in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually stood on the shoulders of giants. So he's. So remember, he's a he's a, an amazing uh, uh, inventor and mathematician, and he discovered the incredible uh, laws of the universe. And and he's saying, yeah. If, okay. you, if you want a good view, <laughs> move into a multi-story. 
<laughs> he's saying, right? He's saying, if I've seen, if I have seen further the people, and he's being modest here, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants to get that view. If it weren't for all the people that have come before him with their great insight and knowledge, he wouldn't have seen what he's seen. He's ta taken his learnings, and those people have given well, him. Why just say that? Instead of making up, it's, that, that's what I've got a problem with. People don't <laughs> poetry, say what they mean. Poetry, poetry, art, and in yeah. life though, people never say what they actually mean, and you know, there's loads of books on it. I don't know. But but the point is that he's he's just summarised quite a tricky idea, beautifully. It's beautiful. Sentence. That 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 that's that that gets into you much deeper than just the words, than just the literal words. You know what I mean? One it, of my favourites is from an American novelist, and the quote is talking about the subject of fame and being famous. Yeah. Fame is a mask that eats into the face. Don't you think that's amazing? Meaning. Well, meaning that the fame, that fame is something that is artificial, that you wear initially, you become famous, but it's, it's, it's ethereal, it's nothing, it's intangible, it's just an artifice. But if you stay famous long enough, you begin to think that that mask you're wearing is really your real face. So that you begin to, you know, think that you are more than, than you perhaps are. Do you see what I mean? In the way that fame and power can corrupt. And who said that? No, it's an American novelist, I forget his name. Yeah, it's alright, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. What's, what, <laughs> okay. what, what, uh... Pick another one, right? Yeah, let's have a look. Um, oh, Bernard Shaw, he's no slouch. I let's think maybe when you read, when you take this book of quotations home, Carl, you should maybe just draw up maybe a list of three or four of your favourites yeah, like, and, and tell Shaw, them next week. I want to do Shaw, um, Wilde, uh, I look at Shakespeare as well, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. what, you, are you a fan of Shakespeare? No. Go on, what's your, what's your problem with it? Just, um, the way they speak. I can't, sure. I can't follow it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like West Side Story? It's, it's really old as well. I can't relate to it. It's, it's like years and years ago, isn't it? That's why I like Churchill, because 1940s. Yeah. Not Look at ago. this. Look at this. This is uh, sure. Okay. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Uh, again, uh, how would you see that in your little? Well, that's your. That's one homework then. I'll mark that. That's your homework. You've got to work that out. You've got to tell me what you think of it. S say again. Don't ask Suzanne. It's there. All right, all right. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Okay? Take that home with you. And we'll be um, hearing Carl come up with some amazing quotations next week. Yeah, pick out your favourites. Now I'd like to uh, play a song for the lovers while he's thinking. No, I don't think we've got the lovers lined up. Oh, uh, what have we got? A bit of hip hop. It's hip hop hooray. Oh, is it? Yeah, everyone's a big fan. Uh, I played something from this last week. It's uh, this new album from Nerd, In Search Of. It's been uh, re-recorded by the lads, I don't know why. <laughs> and um, anyway, it's particularly good. We played last week, Things Are Getting Better. This is the one we have played in the past, actually. Bobby James. <laughs> Doves, there goes the fear on XFM 104.9. Well, just read that book anyway. I'll just, I'll just, can I just say, it? Uh, th this is one of my, a, a beautiful, is Keats, right? Um, what do you think of this? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. See, this, this is just like how it was at school now. I've, uh, the last couple of weeks have been quite interested in what you've been giving me. Now it's, it's really like... Okay. I really don't care. Now this. The, what about this? Now no, I, I, not, I, not, not I did philosophy, and philosophy is obviously the you know the quest for knowledge. And it's, you know, it's a look. Listen to this though. This is what Keats came out with. Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Don't be constrained by what's you know dream a little. You know what I mean? Just go beyond. I don't agree with it, but it's a lovely it's a lovely bit of poetry. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to read that for me, are you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. Just pick out five of your favourites. Yeah. The ones that mean something to you. And then ne next week I'll bring you in pictures of animals. Brilliant. Okay? We'll do it. Okay, and some sweets. <laughs> Rick, um, I've had a word with some of the uh, the top brass here. Or they had a word with me in the corridor. If you remember Did when they we started... Did they say, what, who are you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, no, they said they were saying, you know, obviously enjoy the show, they love it. And, um... They're just worried, though, that in the early days when we started the show, remember, we were a lot more informative. We used to do the film reviews, yeah. those things like the gig guide and stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Which we've kind of let yeah, go by the thing about, way, sorry. The, yeah, so, they want us to bring that. Well, no. exactly. So I just no, 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 the gig guide. I was worried that, funnily enough, the XFM gig guide, it, it, gig guide does not include some of the biggest bands in the world. Okay, all right. Or, or some of the best venues. That's what worried me. No, look, Rick, but, just do what you're told, right? Oh, there's, is it the gig, there's, there's the gig guide. It's got, got big, it's got a lot Am of I big names be on it. You're going to love the gig guide. I need week. a bet. If this is going to be pretty no, impressive. Let's, do the, let's play the proper jingle. Okay. Okay. 
Ah, uh, tonight, uh, if you want to, oh, hey, if you want to see these two bands in a small venue, get down to the Metro Bar on Oxford Street. Doors are at 8pm and tickets are only six quid to see Ten Benson and Beach Buggy. <laughs> ah, Alright? Now, if you missed Long Wave, supporting the Strokes of Brixton Academy last night, you can catch some headlining Casino Royale at the Monarch. Rick, yeah. I missed them last night, how much will I be paying for that? You'll only be paying five pounds, right? But listen, they're also supported by Shelby and I Remember Nothing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, now, people know about the Rickson Academy, but a little-known uh, venue in Rickson is the Windmill. <laughs> okay. you, you're going to see three great bands there tonight. Guapo, <laughs> okay. Plonkes, and Mechanical Beatles Never Quite Warm. <laughs> so, uh, Orange Goblin and Grand Magus play the garage. And, uh, well, the Diffin, what's it, Diefenbach and Sudden play the Rotar Sessions at Nine Hills Arts Club. So that's the gig guy, the next <laughs> <film>. <laughs> What a load of rubbish. <laughs> I mean, st switch off the jingle. Look at this. Yeah. We've discussed this before, haven't we? Names for bands that will never be anything. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mechanical Beatles, Never Quite Warm. <laughs> please welcome to oh. the stage Plankwev. <laughs> please welcome oh. to the stage Orange Goblin. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Look oh, at it. Oh, God. Orange Goblin. Uh, Orange Goblin. <laughs> so what's rubbish. His, what's his name? Uh, um, got a fake town, hasn't he? That one of his mark, com, uh, supermarket suite. What's his name? Dale. Dale Winton. Dale Winton, yeah. Supporting R.E.M. I remember nothing. <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> Just, I mean, please. Come on, people. Think. Hey, here's a band that plays big venues. Doesn't make them better, sure. But this is Radiohead, this is uh, Song for the Lovers, and Let Down, off OK Computer. This is beautiful. So, see, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Th doesn't that move you at all, Carl? <laughs> Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. There was an old lady from Ealing <laughs> who was put into... Radiohead. Let down off OK Computer. Apparently we missed a uh, we missed a gig on that gig guide. Uh, Drip Feed are playing the Rock Garden on the 21st of this month. Excellent. So uh, the lead singer just called in for cool. that. He also uh, left a quote with me. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, Coleridge said of Keats, wasn't it? He's uh, like an archangel, slightly damaged. Rick, so I'm worried we're getting a little bit highbrow. Do you reckon? Have you got any knob gags you could do quickly? Because I'm just thinking we're switching. There's a lot of people are going to be turning off. Um, I uh, mean, currently, currently on Capital FM. Chris Tarrant and Dr. Neil Fox together at last. The partnership we've always they wanted. They said it would never happen. Do you know what I'd like to see together? Uh, that breakfast DJ, Sarah Cox. And who's the, the uh, dance DJ? Um, Carl. Carl. Uh, Carl, Carl Cox. Carl, please, why are you getting you're suddenly saying these rude words? We've been reprimanded yeah, once, don't Carl. Don't say please. that. And don't say it so aggressively because it sounds like you're saying Cox aggressively. Come on, we've been reprimanded. Yeah. All right? That, just don't use language like oh, that. It's annoying me. Why is it annoying you? Because We're talking about DJs, that's yeah. their names. You, you try to be clever. I, I hardly think that's me, clever. You've given me a lot. <laughs> yeah, if that's my best attempt at being clever. I've got rubbish homework this week. Okay, he's really upset he's about really this. Upset. He was looking forward to st uh, an uh, animal fat. You said you were going to bring in that big book, 500 It's so... It, I got it off one of those bargain... But oh, I thought it'd be easy, right? Cause it's, it's, but it's too elementary. No, but that's more useful than that to me. But it's things like, it's things like the tortoise has a shell to protect it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, but you know, because even... you thought it was there just to be painted on the tip. <laughs> 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 oh, have you ever, have you ever peeled a tortoise? They fly. They go about four hundred miles an hour. It's to weigh them down because they're the fastest lizards known to man. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, they run so fast they can go through walls. Yeah, and so that they. That, that their shells put on them in the hospital, in the maternity ward, at a very early age, just slow them down. You let a tortoise uh, uh, shout and you won't catch it. Steve, do you know that turtles can breathe out of the bum? Turtles can breathe out of their bum? I know someone who can talk out of it, but <laughs> Sidra knows that. That's, uh, that <laughs> Where do, well, tell us about that. Tell us about that then. How that, do they do that? It, that's all I know. They get, when they go swimming, they can sort of, uh, <laughs> if they don't want to get their, stick their head out, they can just <laughs> stick their arse out. Yeah. Why, why don't they want to stick their head out? I don't know. Just uh, if, I, I don't know, maybe they don't need, they need to be looking for food under the water. Yeah. So, and if they stick their head up to get some air, they might miss something. Wouldn't it be easier to have an arse that could, um, forage for food? So they could sort of like lounge in the pool like a jacuzzi and they're looking around going, all right, hello, <laughs> hiya. And meanwhile it's arse, it's like munching grass. 
Yeah, Wouldn't breath. that be easier? Bad, bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I understood what that meant. Um, yeah, in all this it's hilarity, like a quote, isn't it? But in all that hi- this hilarity, I'm worried we've um, forgotten the true meaning of Easter. <laughs> no, come on, Rick, come on, come on, you're just, you know, you're being frothy and lightweight and a little bit rude, but, you yeah. know, it is, it's a time for remembering. And chocolate. That, um, someone did die for their our sins. Yeah. So, can we be just... A, be ashamed to disappoint him. Yeah, can we just think about that and just take a moment just to consider that? Yeah, can we do that? Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You understand the true meaning of Easter, it's not just about eggs and bunnies, you no, understand no, no. it, don't you? Yeah. What's your memory of it? What's your understanding of it, Carl? Did, what Easter, you, what's did, it all about for you? What do you have to do at school? Do you have to do anything at school? Uh, I think we got a long weekend off. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did they call that weekend? Easter weekend. Brilliant. Okay. And what was the reason for that? What? Why did we have Easter weekend off? Jesus. Yeah. But what did he do? He uh, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, he didn't put himself on. No. It. Does it mean anything to you? Are you moved by that story? Again, too long ago for me to sort of... <laughs> okay. Um, you know, to worry about to it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if there'd have been an Anderson shout were involved, yeah. you'd have been you'd have been there, wouldn't you? You're not well today, are you, Carl? Not at all. Don't know no. what's wrong with me today. I've, I've got a bit of a temperature. Have you? Do you know Steve, uh, like, you know, he's always on the go at me. Last night when we were out with his mates, yeah. they said he was a bit of a hypochondriac to himself. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? What were they saying? He said, uh, they said, I said, Steve's told me he's not feeling well. Is, you know, is he all right? You live with him? He said, oh, I don't worry about that. Really? So he's always saying that, and I said, that's a bit of a fable. I said, cry wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One day, he say, I've got a temperature, and they go, oh, I've had the lem sip, and he'll die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've learnt my lesson. Yeah. There, there was one about cry, the boy cried wolf. It, the, uh, the moral can surely only be never tell the same lie twice. You know what I mean? Because if he'd have like, come up with a different one, he'd have kept them going all year, I reckon. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I never thought of it like that before. What are we going to play? A final tune. Have we, what, we got, we got, we got a bit of suede, haven't we? Well, it depends. Let's get a bit of suede in and song for the ladies. Let's go over. What's the, so what is it? the ladies' show? It's only the football. You can't, don't say that. Yeah, I'll give us your song. What's the football? What's the match? What's this? A lot of, uh, the gig guide oh. is Long Wave and Guapo and Plankers. What's this? What's the football match? Talk, what are the football matches XFM covering? I don't know. What, what Come song on. would you like? Track, track, track eight. Is it Bolton versus Barnsley? <laughs> you don't like sport, though, do you? A lot well, of people who do. Huh? A lot of people who do. All right, track eight, what are we going for, then? Uh, we're going for, uh, it's a bit of Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And uh, I think it's quite a short song, though, Carl. Are you going to? You sure? No, that's cool. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool. okay. You're okay, are you? Yeah, yeah. So this is the final song. Is this it? lost a lot of energy. This show. This is it. I think mean, the first hour and forty minutes, I think, was dynamite. I think the last ten have been uh, but flagging. But I Carl. He was he was full of life. You know, he was answering the questions and stuff. And now you. And he got it, he got fed up. He got fed up with the quotations. He didn't like us mentioning.